see the blue lights on the hotel. Whoa, I'm getting ready. Tell about TV is in the hotel. Whoa, I'm getting ready. Got a corner on the telephone. Yeah, this is the Ocean of the Messenger, and you're watching Talawa TV with the host and best. Today, we take it away. My Talawas, good evening, good morning, all depends on where you're based in the world. What is my time? My time is steadily, steadily approaching 12 a.m. here in the UK. I couldn't see out my evening, could not see out my evening without giving you an update, an update for that player announcement, the squad announcement for our next two games, final games in our women's CONCACAF qualifiers and two names are back in the team and you can see it right there you probably read my thumbnail if not you probably have your eyes firmly locked on that banner that banner says marlo sweatman and paige bailey gale return to the squad huge huge announcement especially where where Marla Sutman is concerned just about every live stream that I've done so far with regards to the Reggae Girls International break. You guys are always, always asking, where is Marlo Sweatman? So Christmas has come early for some of you. I know you're always knocking on that door, always wanting to know what's going on with Marlo Sweatman. And actually, that actually goes to prove my point. First comment in the comment section is obviously about none other than Marlo Sweatman. Teja, you're always the first one through the door. Yes, yes, I'm so happy for Marlo Sweatman and Paige Bailey. Gail, can't wait. I bet you cannot. I've got a lot to go through this evening because I have been in a way for a couple of days um but i've managed to bounce back from whatever it is my body was going through can't quite put the um can't quite put my finger on it but i definitely weren't feeling well over the last couple of days but glad that i managed to bounce back right in the nick of time for these two crucial games i'm going to be bringing up the table going to be talking about the reggae girls because it is the reggae girls show we are into international Football week where the women's team is concerned, the Jamaica women's team that is. You only have to look behind me. You can see there um, the football jerseys, a few football jerseys there for the men's and women's national side. I want to put some emphasis on the women's national side. Also chosen to wear the black jersey for you guys tonight. Um, So much, so much to go through. I can't remember the last time that I looked at a... Um, squad announcement and I was actually absolutely absolutely buzzing because of one name that popped up two names I should say that popped up on the team sheet Travis good evening to yourself sir how you doing good evening good evening did they pick the squad? Yes, they did. I'm going to be reading out that squad for you before I um, close off on my live stream. It's going to be a while tonight. Tonight, I think I'm going to sit back and talk with you guys because, like I've said, it's been a while since I've done a live stream. Um, so let me go ahead and do something that I always do. Let me go ahead and drop the link to the live stream. That's if you fancy coming on and joining me on my live stream, you are more than welcome to. All you have to do is go ahead and click that link right there. And you know the number one rule. The only rule is to keep it clean. Never know who is watching, so do try to keep it clean. And also, um, it's not really a rule, but if you are coming on, then do try to have a well-lit background so that I and the viewers can see your faces. So like I said, guys, tonight is all about the reggae girls. But given, given some of the good news has happened over on the reggae boys camp with one reggae boy in particular. I think it's only right that we share a light on the reggae boys or at least on this one player that I have in mind. If you've been following my Instagram, you probably know who I'm referring to. Think about success, think about lifting trophies and you will no doubt know who I'm referring to. So like I said, let me see what you guys are saying in the comment section. Good to hear that you're okay, Travis. I'm um, good to know that you're okay. I'm gonna give you guys a squad announcement. Um, let me know what you guys make of the squad announcement. Um, after I finish reading it through, and whilst I'm reading it through, if you guys can't hear me because I will be putting the squad announcement on the screen. It's a couple technical problems last time round, so if you guys can't hear me as I'm reading the squad sheet out, then let me know in the comment section, and I'll do something. Um, from my end, 
so that you guys can hear me. Um, okay, so let me open up some tabs. I want to open up some tabs just to give you guys a gentle reminder for those of you who are new to Jamaican women's football. Probably wondering what is this week all about? What makes this week so special? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and switch on my shared screen you guys probably know that this shared screen has been beating me bad lately but tonight it looks like it's going to be on its best behavior and it's going to actually work for me so let me go ahead and turn on my shared screen surprise surprise it actually works tonight so what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the banner or take off the banner temporarily and then bring it back later on in the show we're going to ban and we're going to go up to my first tab. We're going to look at the table just to give ourselves some a reminder of what the table looks like. Let's actually click on the league table and scroll down to our league. You can see what I've been working on with my Marla Sweatman, Paige Bailey Gale, and my Premier Pro there. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's look at our league table. So we're in Group C in the women's CONCACAF qualifiers and as you can see there out in front is the Dominican Republic they're sitting level on points with us six points apiece only difference there as you can see is goal difference they have 13 and we have nine below us is Bermuda Cayman Islands We've got a game coming up with Cayman Islands and at the bottom rock right bottom of the table is Grenada so if we go back and look at our previous games again for those of you who probably are new to Jamaican football and are wondering what has happened so far in our CONCACAF women's qualifiers this is how it all started off guys back in February February the 17th to be precise on home soil falling winners against Bermuda and you can see the goal scorers on that occasion Jody Brown Trudy Carter also had a double there from Khadija Sharp if we go back and look at the other games, we can see this one. This one caused a bit of a interesting response where the reggae girls' fans are concerned. Some people wanted to see double figures. Some people left feeling pleased or not too upbeat, not too sad about the results where this game is concerned on our away, away trip to Grenada. The story, you can pretty much see it for yourself there, but in case... If you want me to go ahead and read it out, then I'll do exactly that. You can see that Tiffany Cameron opened the scoring. And what a goal that was from Tiffany Cameron. You can see it's a double for Jody Brown and Khadija Shah. Jody Brown and Khadija Shah scored two goals apiece. And Alika Keen, talking about stunners, that was an absolute beautiful goal there from Keen in the 73rd minute. Grenada, I think it's safe to say they deserve their goal. Um, although we don't support them, we still have to give credit where credit is due. They most certainly deserve their goal. And it was a neatly taken goal as well. I must say so myself. So that one ended 6-1. Again, this one brought up such an interesting conversation where our fan base is concerned. So take us down to the present. And here we are, Cayman Islands. First game up. This one is taking place on Sunday, 1 a.m. If you're based in the UK like myself, let me just give you guys a gentle reminder. I am six hours ahead of those of you who are based in Jamaica. So do the maths and figure that one out in terms of when the game will be kicking off. So this one is like this one's going to be a Saturday kickoff for the majority of you. But if you're based in the UK like myself, then this one is kicking off at 1 a.m. Let me just look at my notes quickly there. Um Go back over to this to see what you guys are saying in the comment section. Trust that you guys can actually hear me because nobody is saying otherwise. So let's go back and look at that game against the Cayman Islands. So as I've said, this one is likely to be kicking off for the majority of you on Saturday. But if you're in the UK, it's a 1 a.m. kickoff. Cayman Island sat there in fourth position on the table. Safe to say, guys. No disrespect to the Cayman Islands, safe to say the blockbuster game, the game of our qualifiers so far is against the league toppers at the moment. Just a reminder, there we are sharing points as things stand with the Dominican Republic. Only thing that separates us at present is the goal difference, the blockbuster. And here's our things. Let's just give ourselves a gentle reminder of how things started off with 
Dominican Republic and why they are sitting pretty at the top of the table. And here is why. This is how things started off for them on home soil against Grenada. And they pretty much top Grenada in and sent them to bed 9-0. Impressive scoreline days if you support Dominican Republic. Not so much if you support Grenada. You probably want to erase this scoreline from your history books. We're not going to press too hard against Grenada. Uh, but that's how the scoreline ended on match day one for Dominican Republic. And that's why they're sitting so comfortable at the top of the table. We cross over to their second game, which will be against our opponents on Saturday or Sunday, depending on where you're based in the world. They had their second, second game away from home against Cayman Islands, and they beat the Cayman Islands for nail red card there in the game. Uh, but I don't really think that had much of an impact on the scoreline. Maybe I didn't watch that game myself. I think since we looked at Dominican Republic, it's only right to go ahead and look at Cayman Islands. Let me just go back. Um, so you guys can see why we're looking at Cayman Islands. As you can see there, just a gentle reminder, they're first up in our tool string of games for this qualifying window. So let's look at Cayman Islands and look, up, look at how things have panned out for them. Yeah, for ugly reading, isn't it? We've already touched on Dominican Republic there, 4 nil. Cayman Islands sitting on a red card from that game. And if you cross over to their second game against Bermuda, got tucked in, got put away and sent to bed 6 nil against Bermuda. Um, so surely, surely, as good as we are, surely by when it's time to face off against Jamaica, they should be, should be, so like it's their last game. It will be their last game, last game in the CONCACAF Women's Championship qualifiers. Um, I'm sure on home soil, they will want to give a good account of themselves. They will at least want to get their names on the um, score sheet. At this point, they're playing for pride. Let's remind ourselves that they're sitting in fourth in the league table. Just one place shy of the bottom of the table. Bottom of the table is currently being occupied by Grenada. Um, and so that's how things are looking for Cayman Islands at the moment. They actually face off against... Grenada and this would be well I'm already into call it Tuesday so this one is playing at Wednesday playing on Wednesday at 10 p.m UK again gentle reminder if you are based in Jamaica I am currently six hours ahead of you see what you guys are saying in the comment section think I need to adjust something one second guys who is this Uh, yeah, sorry about that. See what you guys are saying. Let me take off this off screen quickly so I can see what you guys are saying in the comments section. Mr. Bolton, big up yourself, Mr. Bolton. Travis is saying, hope these girls can get the job done. You and me both, Travis. It's starting to feel a little bit tense now, isn't it? Definitely starting to feel a little bit tense um, where our women's team is concerned. There's never a doubt, never doubt them, but given how the team, how the table is looking, I can see why some of you are feeling tense or maybe it's just me maybe it's just me maybe i'm the only one that's feeling tense again not doubting the side we all know about their capabilities and their abilities so i'm most certainly not doubting them hot chili how you doing sir good evening to yourself how's your day been how's your week going i'm going to be reading out that all important squad announcement for those of you who are just tuning in christmas has come early for so many of you because there we have it if i bring up my banner there we have it sweatman that's marla sweatman and paige bailey gale return to the squad i know so many of you have been knocking on that door just about every live stream that i've done so far in recent months you guys have always probed that question of where is Sweatman and where is Bailey Gale? So you can just put your mind at ease and you can probably put your feet up for the next two games that we have coming up in a matter of days. Um, 
kicking off firstly on Sunday against the Cayman Islands. You'll probably, probably, depending on the starting lineup, get to see Marla Sweatman in action from the jump. If not, then possibly putting in a super sub performance for, from, for us when called upon. Ravi, I am good, Ravi. Much, much better. Much, much better. Ravi, we're not going to talk about that team today. We're not. We're focusing on positivity today, Mr. Ravi. I'm going to ignore that one, but I can see your comment. But we're focusing on some positivity today. I don't know about you guys, but I want to go to my bed in good spirits. So I'm not talking about certain teams tonight for sure. Definitely not talking about certain team. Did they call Spence from Chelsea and the girl from Villa? Well, that's nice to put there, Travis. With regards to Drew Spence, I did probe the question of um, what's going on with Drew Spence in relation to a documentation. Um, and there was no update there, no update where Drew Spence documentation is concerned, whether that's certain people playing their cards or holding their cards close to their chests. Maybe or maybe not, because when we look at that squad sheet, that should probably give you guys an answer to your question. Let's see. Let's see what Trav what Teja is saying. Hope Vin Bain call it the best players. What about Drew and Siobhan? The top cross left back. <laughs> Maybe I should swap seat with Mr. Vin Blaine for you and you could probe Vin Blaine because he would be the man that could answer all your questions there, Mr. Scott. Let's see what Hot Chili is saying. Hot Chili says, my week is going well. Jamaica won. Well, Jamaica won. Man City won. My birthday tomorrow and hopefully the reggae girls can qualify. Well, happy birthday um, when it comes. And when it does come, I hope you live to see many, many more. Um, do put your feet up. Um, I don't know what you're into, whether it's drinking, eating. I don't know what type of food you're into, but whatever it is, I hope you have a blessed day when it arrives. It is taking long, but let's focus on the positive and focus on the players that we have in the team at the moment. The players who manage to accept their call up and also on this occasion, since you're talking about passports and documentation, let's focus on players like... Bailey Gale, Paige Bailey Gale of Leicester City. All right, so let me see. How should I do this one for you guys? I think I should probably give you guys some player updates in regards to what's happened at the, if you want to call it now, at club level. I think I should probably start it off like that and then we could head over into our squad announcements. So, let me see if I can bring up another tab for you guys. Um, big one. I'm going to go with the big one for you guys. You're probably, you're probably fully, fully aware of this lovely bit of news, especially, especially if you've been following my Instagram because I did post about it yesterday. Um, just check this final comment before I open up my tab. <laughs> big up yourself all right guys so let me go over to my shared screen once more and i know i know we've been tracking this team all season haven't we we have been tracking liverpool and for those of you who aren't aware of who belongs to liverpool just a gentle reminder this is the club belonging to jade bailey and as you can see there out in front 49 points, 20 matches played, one loss. Like I said, if you guys have been sitting with me every week, we have been tracking Liverpool, been keeping a close eye on Liverpool and some good news there. Um, They've done it. Liverpool and Jade Bailey have secured promotion to the FA Women's Super League after winning the 2022 championship title with a thrilling 4-2 victory over second place Bristol City so we can go ahead and look at this game this one was actually a cracking game all they needed was a win or a draw to etch their names on the title and that's how it all panned out where this game is concerned like I said going into this one pay um let's say Paige Bailey um Jade Bailey only needed a point, Jade Bailey and Liverpool only needed a point to seal 
the championship title and they did it in incredible fashion if you could look at the score line went ahead in the 13th minute and were pegged back literally a minute later by bristol city bristol city were the hosts for this one and uh, bit of a sweet victory there for jasmine matthews um, going up against former club what a way to do it as well in the 39th minute and you can read the rest of the score line there to see how that one panned out but more importantly aside from the fact that jade bailey and liverpool are champions of the championship there in england you're probably wondering did she play well she came on in the 84th minute to help liverpool pretty much just see out this victory and see not the victory something that they most certainly did if i go back over here i think i do have something here to show you guys see if i can just click off my shared screen because you don't really need that right now and bring up something that you guys probably have seen again if you're following my instagram you would have seen this picture right here if it can actually come up i might have to stop my shared screen and see if i can bring up a few images for you guys I wonder again, this stream yard does act like it wants to just ruin, ruin my night. Doesn't always happen, but now and again, it does happen where it just doesn't want to cooperate. Let's see. Okay, so I can't actually bring up my videos or my pictures for you guys, which is a little bit disappointing. See what it's telling me. Aren't visible in... Okay, yeah, I'm not going to be doing that. Okay, so I'm having a bit of a technical glitch there, um, and I can't actually bring up the images that I wanted to show you guys. But if you do want to see Paige Bailey Gale there and Liverpool celebrating their trophy victory, then you can go ahead and make your way over to my Instagram page, and you will see a photo there of Jade Bailey. Not Paige Bailey. If I said Paige Bailey, then I apologize. Jade Bailey and Liverpool. Glad to see Liverpool do well, but I hope them. <laughs> I can only imagine who you support, right? You want to see the squad? Okay, I'm going to try and see if I can bring it up. Let me see if I feel, is it just that one picture that isn't working or, or other pictures not working as well? Let's see if Marlo works. Interesting. Might have to do a quick refresh here, guys. I don't know why my images aren't working. They need to work, so I'm going to do a quick refresh and see um, what needs to be done. Bear with me one moment. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Marla Sweatman seems to be working for us, so that's good. Nothing that a refresh wouldn't solve. So let's go back and see if we can try again with Jade Bailey. Jade Bailey don't seem to be in luck. Seems to be some technical issues here, guys, because pretty sure you guys saw Marla Sweatman show up on my screen. All right, let's try something different. screen let me know if you guys can hear me in the comment section guys could you hear me just then when i brought up um jade bailey and liverpool because it's gonna be a little bit tricky if you can't hear me when the images are on screen so let me know if you can hear me uh if not then i'll have to show you the images and then do a brief discussion so all on you guys to let me know what's going on 
where this technical issue is concerned. Let's see, hopefully it will be the men and women celebration for Liverpool. This is a pivotal weekend coming up. Huge weekend coming up there, Jasmine. Um, best of luck to you and your team. Massive, massive weekend. <laughs> Hot Chili, you sound a little bit nervous. You're sounding a little bit nervous there, Hot Chili. Um, again, guys, let me know if you could beg to differ. <laughs> Jasmine and Hot Chili, um, can you guys hear me? Yankee, all you guys, Travis in the comment section, could you hear me? Can you hear me when I bring up the images on screen or do I need to bring it up on screen and then take it off and then have a discussion? Because I can't tell if you guys can hear me. I do know that I'm having a bit of a technical issue where the images are concerned. So let me know if you guys can hear me. I'm going to try that again by bringing up. Let's see if I bring up. <laughs> guys in the comment section. Um, okay, let me go back to my images and see something. How's that one working for you guys? Could you guys hear me in the comment section whilst the images, whilst the images on screen, or should I just not work with the images tonight? Because can't really tell. The only way I can actually tell, um, maybe I should go ahead and test it out on my phone, see if it's working. Maybe right. I should go. All right, let me test this one out again. You guys are not cooperating with me tonight. Okay, let's test this one out again. Marla, Mar Mar see if I can bring back Marla. I don't think you guys can hear me because I couldn't hear myself when I watch watch back the video. So, all right, guys, that's a little bit that's a little bit disappointing. Um, okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring bring up the images and then I'm going to do a short discussion for you guys. Um, let's go back and look at the rest of the action, last week's action where the reggae girls are concerned also let me go back over on this shared screen you guys are gonna have to tell me if you can hear me especially if i'm going to be working with shared screen i need to know if you guys can hear me in the comment section otherwise bringing up the shared screen shared screen would be a complete complete waste of time so i'm gonna give you guys a couple of more updates where the reggae girls are concerned at club level before we get into the team announcement just a reminder this live stream bulk of this live stream is actually focused on marla sweatman and paige bailey gail they have made their return to the squad and i know that's welcome news for so many of you because you're always always wanting to know what's going on with marla sweatman and paige bailey gail right i'm gonna bring up my shared screen again i'm gonna leave jasmine and hot chili in the comment section because it seems like they're having their little square off so I'm going to leave them in the comment section and I'm going to go over to the Hungarian top division. You guys don't know who play in the top division, but in case you're not aware of which players play in the top division in Hungary, it will it would be as things stand, Marla Sweatman, Tiffany Cameron and Alika Keen. And this one right here, this one, this is a match from last weekend. So this one was played on Saturday. No doubt if you have kept an eye on my instagram you probably already know how this one pans out and if if in case you don't know who plays for who it will be victoria for marlo sweatman and etto for cameron and keen interesting scoreline here when you look at the league table you've got marlo sweat you've got tiffany cameron's etto sat in 
second place there. They're chasing down Tiffany's former team. They're leading the pack out on 37 points. And currently in fourth position, we have Victor um, Victoria, and that's the team belonging to Marla Sweatman. And this scoreline pretty much read itself. You don't want to read it. I'll go ahead and read it for you. Marla Sweatman and Victoria registered a convincing 2 nil victory over Tiffany Cameron and Alika Keynes Eto in the Hungarian top women's um, division. For those of you who are wondering, Keen sat this one out due to illness, so she wasn't available for this game. Don't be too worried, though, because she has made the squad announcement where our two games are concerned on the international front. So though she missed this one out against her compatriot, Marlo Sweatman, she was able to um, find her with find her name on the squad announcement. <laughs> What's the knob for? I don't know what the knob is for. Is that the knob saying that you can't hear me? You guys are confusing me tonight. Are you saying you can't hear me on the voiceover when the screen share is on, or are you saying no to something else? Um, that was a bit of a random roving ball player that's a bit of a random nope um add a bit of clarity to that one for me because i don't know what that's all about so add some clarity to that one for me all right staying on women's football since we are brushing up on where the results are concerned i think it's only right that we make a little trip to london and see what happened in london where Another reggae girl is concerned. This time, the reggae girl that we're focusing on is Drew Spence. Let's go ahead and click my tab there at the top. And as you can see, this one pretty much read itself, doesn't it? Where uh, Drew Spence and Chelsea is concerned. And they obviously play in the top division in the Women's League over in England. Uh, if you don't want to read this one out for yourself, I'll go ahead and read it for you. Drew Spence and Chelsea return to the top of the FA Women's Super League with a final 5 nil thumping over Reading. If you go back, you can actually see that they've made their return. One point difference between their London rivals Arsenal. So this one, as things stand, so looks like it's going down to the wire, doesn't it? Chelsea have only lost twice so far this season. 18 matches played. Um, a little bit of a difference there, but not a large difference. And you can only judge that based off the points. Arsenal, on the other hand, they're closest rivals both in the table and also um, in terms of location. Their closest rivals, Arsenal, have only lost once this season and if you support us and i'm not going to remind you who you lost to because it is a little bit embarrassing so i'm not going to remind you who you lost to if you look at the team the rest of the table well i'm sure here it's only right to look at the rest of the table where our girls are concerned uh, manchester city you definitely know who plays for manchester city don't you just in case you don't and you happen to be new to um, the reggae girls and where they play their trade at club level. This is the team belonging to Bunny Shaw, Khadija Shaw. And you can see her name right there sitting pretty on the score sheet. Um, Khadija Bunny Shaw doubled Manchester City's lead over West Ham. And it's actually a crucial result because if we go back, this is what that meant. That actually means that they're keeping things quite heated. They're following their rivals. And at that point, at the end of the game, things were all square. Level on points with their closest match, with their closest team, Manchester United. They're in terms of the derby and where they're based, or two Manchester clubs, they're going head-to-head, -head, trying to finish in spectacular um, style for the third pl third place finish hopefully hopefully bunny and manchester city can get this one over the line and pip manchester united or kick them off that third place position a matter of fact don't pit them boot them off that third place position and sit firmly in third so that's how things are looking for Manchester City and Bunny. I know some of you are going to be absolutely delighted because I know just about every week when we sit here and we go through these games, um, player for player by player, we're usually left feeling disappointed, aren't we? Where Manchester City and Bunny is concerned because she's often 
coming off the bench. And I say she's often coming off the bench, but when she does come on, she's usually that super sub, um, getting her goal or assist. So it's not all doom and gloom for Bunny. Going to be going through. Let's see what you guys are saying in the comment section. I've not caught one of your YouTube shows in a couple record girls are back and I am back to get informed that you've not really missed much, definitely not over the last couple of days because I've actually not been able to produce any videos for you guys. That's just purely down to the fact that I haven't been feeling well. But um, tonight, um, back to my usual self. You guys didn't hear my shade screen just then. You've got to be kidding me. Let me know in the comment section if you guys actually had, um, if you guys could hear my voice whilst the shade screen was on, whilst the shade screen was currently being placed on screen. Because if you guys did not hear that, then I'll be, I'll be disappointed. It just means that, again, once again, StreamYard is mocking me about. So let me know, guys, in the comment section if you heard my shades. Well, Hot Chili says that he was here in Roving. I kind of feel like you're just here to cause me trouble tonight because I'm going to go with Hot Chili. Perhaps you need to restart your device there, Roving. I don't know if you're using your mobile phone or your desktop, whatever it is. Please go ahead and restart it. Hot Chili said that he heard the voiceover with the shared screen so i'm gonna go and say that yes he did actually <laughs> jasmine and so you see all my trusted followers are telling me that they heard my um voiceover there so roving i feel like you might support cayman islands or dominican republic you know because you've come over here as the away fans causing all types of confusion so, guys, if you're just tuning in, this is what tonight's live stream is all about. It is all about the return of Marlo Sweatman and Paige Bailey Gale. They've made their return. Welcome return, I must say, a welcome return to the Reggae Girl squad for our two crucial games against the Cayman Islands and also against the blockbuster fixture so far against Dominican Republic. Let me go down, Mikey, Mr. Balin, how are you, sir? Look like you took my advice and took. <laughs> Mikey, I have been absolutely, body just shut down over the last couple of days, Mikey. So my apologies. Travis, I think you're right in the nick of time, although I'm pretty sure you're well in the loop in regards to our squad announcement. I know some of you in the, in the comment section are asking about the squad. So... Before I get into the squad, I'm going to try and see if I can bring up another player. See if I can bring up another player for you guys. I know we're supposed to be talking about the reggae girls and reggae girls only. But considering, considering Mr. Hardin has lifted his first bit of silverware, I think it's only right that we, only right that we focus on Wesley Hardin. Just for a little bit, maybe just for a minute. And then we could just bring our focus back to the women's national team and all that they've done so far at club level more importantly was about to unfold where the women's team is concerned so see if this one works Big game, big, big game. That one being played at Wembley Stadium over the weekend. Yes, it is good for Harden. Massive, massive result there for Harden. I'm going to go ahead and turn on that shared screen once more so we can read that result together. Again, you probably know about these results because you probably would have kept your eyes on my Instagram page. But for those of you who aren't following my Instagram, you probably don't know about the results. So let's go ahead and put back on that shared screen. 
and let's go over to Rotherham United and that is the club I'm really happy for Wes, with, with Wesley Harding actually because like myself I know you guys have been sitting here week in week out every weekend tuned into what Wesley Harding and Rotherham have um, gotten up to so far this season and it's nice to see that they bagged a trophy and they did so in, in some tense fashion as well you can go ahead and read the scoreline if you don't want to read the scoreline then I go ahead and read it out for you and they played against Sutton United on Sunday so just yesterday at Wembley Stadium for the Football League trophy or the Papa John's trophy which one you want to call it and this is how the game went people as you can see there wilson opened the scoring for sutton united in the 30th minute so if you are a rubber united supporter you're probably looking and thinking what's going on here did i make this trip all for nothing but sutton were pegged back in the 42nd minutes Craig Eastman, if you support Arsenal, you're definitely familiar with that name. Craig Eastman took Sutton United into the lead once more in the 48th minute. And this is where it must have been. People, if you was at Wembley Stadium or if you're watching from home or tuning in via the radio, if you're a Rotherham fan, then surely this is where you're probably in dream land in the 96 minutes. Ose Tutu scored. And then you can see another goal being scored again in the 90, 96 minutes, 90, 90 plus minutes there. Um, basically, all three goals, winning goals coming in extra time there for Rotherham. And it's a huge, huge result for Wesley Harden. It's a result that pretty much ensured that he was given or gifted, presented with his first career silverware and that's an impressive impressive result there for wesley Harden, wesley Harden and rubberham united crowned kings of the papa jans 2020 22 trophy the millers clinched two goals in extra time to claim a 4-2 victory over sutton united at wembley stadium on sunday afternoon so for the traveling supporters of rubberham i'm pretty sure pretty sure that trip, I'm not sure if you're going to experience anything like it again in your lifetime. Hopefully you do, as long as Wesley Harden is your player. Hopefully you do experience more trophy winning, trophy lifting moments at Wembley Stadium. Sutton United must be devastated um, with all that happened. Six goals though, if you're a neutral and you managed to get your hands on a ticket to Wembley to watch the Papa John's final six goals entertaining game i'm sure it was worth every penny let's go back over to the shared screen and hearing i'm glad that you're hearing because i was beginning to wonder what is going on don't know what was going on with you but i am glad that you've managed to get things sorted oh i think we're pretty much done in terms of the player updates go ahead and close the rest of my tabs so I don't end up confusing myself. I know you guys want to know about the squad announcement, don't you? But considering considering the fact that I've been getting a few um, what do you want to call it now? Technical problems where the shared screen is concerned. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the squad announcement. I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to hear me. So it would help if you guys let me know if you can hear me in the comment section. Because I'm about to bring up that shared screen, that dreaded shared screen once more. And read out that squad announcement for you all. All right, let's give this a go. I'm nervous with this, but let's give this one a go. See if it works. Hit the shared screen, right? Here we go. Let's see if this one works for you all. Hopefully. Again, let me bring my phone up, actually, so I can see if you guys are saying anything in the comments section. If you can't hear me whilst I'm doing, whilst I'm reading the squad announcement, let me know. Let's see, let me bring that up on my phone as well. <clears throat> 
Right, so you guys should be able to see that. You should be able to give it a read if it isn't too small. If it is too small, I'm going to go ahead and read it for you. Well, even if it wasn't too small, I would still be nice enough to give it a read for you guys. So if we scroll to the top, you can see what this one is all about, can't you? Senior Women's National Team 2020-22 CONCACAF Women's Qualifiers. All important date there for you guys if you want to follow the reggae girls over their next two crucial fixtures where the CONCACAF Women's Qualifiers are concerned. Here are the two dates to etch these ones in your diary. Check the time as well if you're based in England, like myself, and the and um, Jamaica, there's a six-hour difference. So don't be confused with the times. Cayman Islands, first on the list. And that will be an away trip to the Cayman Islands on April 9th. And we will close things off with a blockbuster against the Dominican Republic on April 12th. So here you have it, the two names at the top. And it's great to see that they're firmly sat at the top. There, Paige Bailey Gale of Leicester City, and we also have Marla Sweatman of Victoria over in Hungary. They've made their name long awaited return. They've made their return a long awaited return back to the senior women's national side. We also have Maria Gray, Jasmine, Jasmine Jameson, Sashana Campbell, Khadija Shaw, Trudy Carter, Sydney Schneider, Tini Wiltshire. Kiki Van Zanten, Tiffany Cameron, Chinalu Asher, Shade Odomola Kun, Alison Swaby, Chantel Swaby, Vian Samson. And if we scroll down, we see the rest of the names. We see Kayla McCoy, Rebecca Spencer, Jody Brown, and Michaela Days. Let me know if you guys got that one. If you didn't, it's a bit of a bad, bad, um, bad news. I'll try my best to see if I can find another way to um read out that team sheet for you all i hope you guys managed to hear me that i think i could hear myself on my phone so you guys should be able to hear me let me know what you guys think of the squad announcements Travis says, good to have some quality in the midfield of the addition of Marlowe. Absolutely. That's the reason why I'm smiling so much. Just like you've said, you've hit the nail on the head there um, where Marlowe is concerned. Delighted to see her back in the team. We know what you guys think of the... Good. Thank God. Thank God that you guys could hear me loud and clear. I was worried a bit. That was... Oh, okay. Okay, I get you. Okay, yeah, there's some technical um issues on my end. Not really sure what it is. I feel like with StreamYard, it's hit and miss. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So my apologies. I think this is a question that I need to ask the gaffer. What's going on with Havana? What's the latest update there? with Havana and we already know that a few players aren't available due to personal reasons and other reasons if you want to know why some players aren't available all you have to do is check their social media um, Instagram in particular and you will find out all the news for yourselves I'll go through my notes and see what there is to to talk about So you guys are um really quiet tonight i don't know what it is what is it monday blues you guys are usually a little bit more animated than that so again guys let me know what you think of the squad announcement um who are you excited to see oh. Very strong squad can do some damage in the final two games. We definitely need to do some some damage. Definitely need to see to do some damage. Yeah, Dre, we're talking about updates on the player. So hopefully. Vin Blaine should be able to give us some updates on as to what's going on with Havana. So 
So let me bring back up that team sheet for you guys. Where is it? Where's my team sheet? I'm going to bring back up that team sheet for you all. Really close my um my premier prior I won't be needing that. Um So a question here, Gray. Uh, depends, depends. Um, when was the last time you saw the, the 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 team play? Might be at least one player there or two players that you're not used to seeing or aren't familiar with. So, who didn't you see? Or if I read out the 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 squad announcement not too long ago. Not sure if you caught the announcement, but when was the last time you saw the Riga girls play? Because I might give you a few names that I'm assuming should be new to you, but they probably aren't because you probably caught them at the last qualifying window. So let me know when was the last time you saw them play. And maybe I could um, give you a name. In terms of new players, um, it's not new at this point, but new-ish would be Bailey Gale. Paige Bailey Gale, that is, for Leicester City. That's if you didn't catch her back in October. That would have been against Costa Rica alongside Drew Spence. Drew Spence, I did probe a question where Drew Spence is concerned. Drew Sp um, yeah, I did probe a question where Drew Spence is concerned, um, but she, the response that I received was that there is no update with regards to her passports so it seems like we're gonna have to wait a little while longer where drew is concerned the squad should do well if they play up to their potential yeah i think it's that goal difference and that goal line that um high scoring from the dominican republic that's probably got a few people on the edge of their seats i don't think anyone's worried about their playing abilities so I definitely agree with you there, Jasmine, that they should do well, um, pending that they play up to their potential. I think at this point, I want to see double figures. Love to see double figures, especially again, so I'm so sorry, Cayman Islands, but I would love to see double figures over Cayman Islands. Um, again, or a blockbuster, the game of the qualifiers so far in terms of the CONCACAF women's qualifier, the game of that qualifiers is no doubt against... The league leaders, as things stand, the Dominican Republic. Okay, so you're probably looking forward to seeing Paige Bailey. Let me know, um, Glenn Roy. Let me know if you if you um, caught a glimpse of the player announcement just then. If not, I'll go over it and I'll read out some names for you. But I think if you're saying that was the last time you watched them play, then you probably would have seen Paige Bailey play then, right? You must have seen Paige Bailey play um, towards the latter stage of last year. I don't know how often you watch the women's team play, but if you're telling me the last time you watched them was at the last qualifying window some weeks ago, then you must you must have caught a glimpse of Paige Bailey. You would have seen Kiki as well, Van Zanten. I'm sure you're familiar with Vian Sampson. Um, let's see. The Day Sisters, you must be familiar with the Day Sisters as well. Michaela Days, you must be familiar with her. Rebecca Spencer there from Tottenham. It's another um, player that you most certainly would be familiar with. And all the rest of the players, so the rest of the players being the core players, you most certainly are familiar with those guys. Maria Gray, Yasmin Jameson, Sashana Campbell, Khadija Shaw. Trudy Carter, Sydney Schneider, Terry Wiltshire. I don't know if you're familiar with her. Um, perhaps so. You should be if you've been keeping a close eye on the reggae girls. Most certainly know who Tiffany Cameron is, Chinilu Asher, Shade Adamolakun, the Swaby sisters, Alison and Chantel Swaby. And like I said, you must know who Vian Sampson is by now. Um, and Jody Brown. You must know Jody Brown and Kayla McCoy. So I don't think there's any names there that you're not familiar 
with. Finn Blaine was on with Manning Smans on I'm sure is ill injured according to Vin. He said she'd be in rehab now. So that's good to know that she's um on a steady recovery. I would like to see I would like to I would like to see Drew. Yeah, well, well, Drew is a little bit complicated because, like I said, I did ask about her availability in terms of her documentation and what's the latest of her documentation. And I was told that there is no update. And clearly there is no update because her name isn't on the team sheet. Um, what that means, I have no idea what that means for the future. All I can take it as it's a waiting game. So we just have to sit and wait patiently to see um, when she'll be able to accept another call up for her country. But until then, it's unfortunately a waiting game. And all we can do at this point is to focus on the players that we have. Um, this point, let's look in elsewhere and wondering why certain players weren't called up. Obviously, it's good to see that you guys are concerned, especially where um, injuries where injuries arise for certain players, it's good to know that you guys are concerned. But if it's to do with documentation or personal reasons, then that's completely quite similar to injury and rehab. That's completely out of our control. Okay, let me go back and look at that. Um, Team sheet there. You guys probably noticed that it says Washington Spirit for Sydney Schneider. She's actually not at Washington Spirit. She's actually moved. She moved away from Washington, Washington Spirit and she's at Kansas City Current. Um, so ignore that on the team announcement where it says um, Sydney Schneider, Washington Spirit. Someone didn't do their homework. I don't know who's in charge of putting this announcement together, but they need to make a little amends. Um, then again, everybody makes mistakes. So yeah, they probably need to make a little bit of an amends. And also for, if you was reading, if you had your eyes gripped on that squad announcement where um, Yasmin Jameson is concerned, you're probably wondering why it currently says, let me take a look at that. It currently says on the team announcement that she's unattached, but don't be alarmed about that because she's not um, back in, I believe it was late February. Yeah, it was late February um, where the announcement came for Yasmin. Let me actually turn back on my shared screen so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Mr. Dre Any Weather, good evening to you, sir. I hope that you're well. What do you make of the team announcement, Dre? I don't know if you're just tuning in, but let me know what you make of the team announcement. Um, I'll go back to Jameson, because on the, on the squad announcement, you guys have probably picked up on it, like myself. I'm going to go back. Let me close off on my Photoshop. I have way too many stuff open. Let me close my Photoshop and then bring back up that squad announcement, because um, you would have noticed a few unattached. All right, let's bring that up. So yeah, so this is what I'm referring to right here, a few of the unattached players. So Jameson, there's a error there. Um, again, everybody makes mistakes, but if we go back over to last month. So yeah, when did I do this? This was sent on. So the 23rd of February, um, as you can see there on screen, Canadian club Simcoe County Rovers have confirmed the signing of Yasmin Jameson from P18 IK in Sweden. So shouldn't be down as a unattached player because she actually belongs to a club. Again, quite similar to Sydney Schneider. A little bit of an error there where um, her club is concerned. Go to the top, you can actually see that Sydney Schneider. They made an announcement day as in Kansas City current. Um, as you can see there, the headline on screen for you. Let's maximize that so you can read it for yourself. Kansas City current signed Jamaican national team goalkeeper, Sydney Schneider. 
so that one came last month. Um, so date on that one. That's the 23rd of last month. That's when the announcement was made. So if you're watching the squad announcement and you're reading as you go along, don't pay too much of an attention to the club and university. There's a one or two errors there. Um, I think Elks looks accurate. Um, Swaby, Chantel Swaby, that is playing for Rangers. <laughs> oh god um <laughs> allison swaby playing for angel city vian samson plays for charlton Athlet Athlet athletic and of course um we already know that kayla mccoy and chantel swaby share a team with <laughs> rangers up there in scotland so um Let's go back over and see what you guys are saying in the change my background because I can still see Wesley in my background. See what you guys are saying. Vin Blaine still miss out on world class plays. So who would you have called up? Taja, you need to actually bring yourself on screen one day because you have so much to say in your comment section and then when it's time to click that button to come on screen, you're always like shying away. I don't know why that is, but you always have so much to say in the comment section. That's a good thing, um, but it also would be great if you brought yourself on screen and um, share your opinion. So who would you have brought up? Who would you have called up? Tager, uh, bearing in mind that it is two pivotal games. I'm not sure if you're one for chopping and changing, but at this point, um, do you really want to be chopping and changing or do you just want to say, I'm going to use the same players from the last qualifying window and start with the strongest starting 11? I know you guys weren't best pleased with um, a few players getting minutes over the last two games because you perhaps wanted to see a higher scoreline so some of you are screaming out for double digits i think it was travis that said 40 nil against grenada is it 14 nil you said travis i'm pretty sure you said something <laughs> something like 14 nil against grenada no respect whatsoever so we'll see my i'm gonna hold you to that i am going to hold you to that so whilst you're at it let me know who you would have called up there's a few players names that didn't make the list this time around made a note of those players i'm going to see if how good you guys's memory is let me see how good your memory is if you can and don't cheat don't go on to google and try to find the answers um let's see if you guys can remember let me count down the players actually on three three four players who are the four players that are absent from this qualifying window there's four players that made the last qualifying window and those players aren't on the list that i just read out whether or not there's been a change to the list um i trust that there hasn't been a change because i've not received any update from my end so who are the four players that were on the list at the last window and aren't on this month's window the defenders was really the problem for me should have called yeah defense have always been a problem i don't think it's the case where it's just going to be where it's gonna magically change overnight it's always been a problem it's been a problem um dating back to the last gaffer the last gaffer being hubert busby jr it was a problem then and it's still a problem now i think it's one of those things where it's most it most certainly won't be solved overnight and let's remind ourselves that we're missing two of those key players um blackwood then then blackwood and also Konya plummer as well um so yes we have been working with a makeshift defense some of the reasons are completely out of our control but most certainly i do agree with you that defense is our weakest part on the field the slower right back no mr scott who are you referring to, sir? The slow right back don't call up. I don't know who that is. 
I don't know. Yes, Travis. Yes, Travis. This is why I'm saying it's not really a surprise. It's something you know we heard Vin Blaine touch on. Have we touch? We heard Vin Blaine touch on um, this issue here, where the defense is concerned, and he was quite transparent about that, wasn't he? I believe it might have been in his first press conference as the. Um, interim head coach of the women's national team where he said that the weakest our weakest area on the pitch happens to be the defense okay see Mr. Scott this is why I need you to come on screen because me and you we're going to have to me and you are going to be in a tug of war over this definitely we're going to be in a little bit of a tug of war because she was heavily involved in all the right um, ways, heavily involved in our last two games. If you go back and watch those those two matches, involved, not just involved just um, for argument's sake, but in terms of helping to string those um, goals together. If you look back in the game against, who was it? Who was our first match against? It was against... Um, was it Grenada, guys? My memory isn't that great. I think it was Grenada, right? Or was it Grenada that we closed off on? Let me go back and look at our team, actually. Let's go back. Who did we play? Bermuda. That was it. Bermuda. Um, Bermuda and Grenada. If you go back and look at Dominic Bonflaza, you will see that she was involved for all the right reasons, helping to string those passes together. And our goals, the majority of our goals um, over those two games came from defence. Um, so credit to our defence, considering that is our weakest area on the pitch. They actually managed to be involved, directly involved with the goals that were scored, um, that was scored over the last two games. So that was, what, 10 goals Um is it 10 goals? Let me go back. I think I'm looking at the wrong thing. Yeah, 10 goals scored for us between Bermuda over Bermuda and Grenada. And the defense, especially Dominic Bonflaza, she was involved. So, um, I know what you said earlier on, but I'm struggling to see the point that you're um, making with regards to Dominic Bonflaza. She's a good player, but... You know, there's always a but with Mr. Scott. If you guys know anything about Mr. Scott, you'll know that there's there's a but coming somewhere. Exactly. So that's why I'm I'm, I'm scratching my head to say that um where where is the but coming from? I'm waiting on this respond because, like Travis McKenzie has stated, um he says. She, with regards to Dominic Bonflaza, she makes up for her speed with her passing ability, direct, accurate passing ability from Dominic Bonflaza. So maybe it's a case of you might need to go back and watch those two games there um, just to remind yourselves of the quality that Dominic Bonflaza brings to our team. Um, watch back the game against Bermuda and against Grenada. And maybe, maybe... Teja, maybe you might just remove remove that butt. I'm really sure where the butt comes from. I get it. She's not this um most she's not the quickest on the squad, but <laughs> okay, let me see what you're saying. All right, let me bring up let me bring up your comment. She's a good player, but she is slow and top class forwards going to give her some serious problem. Only problem I have the speed that she calls to foul the player. No more but I don't trust you when you say no more, but look, you're entitled to your opinion. I just wanted to gain an understanding as to what the but was um with Dominic Bonflasa, well, if that's the case, then that's not nothing a player can do about. I don't really think she's going to improve her speed. If that's the case, then you need to get appropriate cover within that position. I think the whole defence needs appropriate cover. There needs to be some squad depth there where our defence is concerned. Because if not, we're going to be sat here. Like Travis said, Travis McKenzie said, this was an issue. The defence was an issue at the last World Cup cycle. Fast forward couple of years later, we're still talking about the defence being the weakest area or weakest area on the field. So clearly that's something that needs to be analysed and looked at and we need to do get the scouting right so that we can bulk up in the fence because if not, we're going to be sat here talking about um, the defence being 
an area that needs to be worked on. So you guys, again, in the comment section, let me know what you think of the squad announcements. Um, Paige, I don't think you've actually told me who you would have called up. I see you touched on, I think you might have touched on Havana. Um, but it seems like you would have called up a host of players. So let me know. Let me know. Um, Alika King, yeah, she is, um, she picked up a, I say picked up, she was unwell there, Alika King. She was unwell. She's why she, which is why she missed her, I call it the Reggae Girls Derby, the Hungarian Reggae Girls Derby, where um, Alika Keen and Tiffany Cameron and Marla Sweatman is concerned. So she was unwell. Uh, let me go through that list. Whether or not, we're, I don't think we're going to be seeing a surprise inclusion from Keen. I don't think there's been any changes made to this squad, guys. Um, I know someone just asked me about Keen. Let me see if I can bring that comment up. Where is it? Where is the comment? The twins. You're talking about the Days twins? Drew Spence. Drew Spence isn't available. Again, I touched base with that one, and that is due to the ongoing documentation issue. And we score against Grenada. <laughs> You're talking about Keen. So Keen is um she again she missed Victoria's game against um sorry Eto FC versus or Victoria I should say Marla Sweatman's two 0 victory over Elika Keen's and Tiffany Cameron's um Eto FC so Victoria and Eto FC screwing off against each other that one worked in favor of Marla Sweatman they walked away two goals to the good and like I said Keen missed that one due to illness <laughs> actually let me know if you want me to read out that squad again um i think i think i probably need to go through that squad with you guys once more um so you can see who actually made the let's see okay let me see See, some of you are asking about the squad. So actually, since you're asking, I'm going to go over that squad announcement once more just for you. So let me go back and see. I was hopeful that Alika, I've um, got my hopes up. I was hopeful that I would see um, Alika's name in the squad sheet. All right, let's go and maximize that. I'm sure you guys can see that on your screen. So at the top, we have the return of Paige Bailey, Gail, and Marlo Sweatman. Delighted to see those two names included in the squad. We have Mar Mariah Gray, J Yasmeen Jameson, Sashana Campbell, Khadija Shaw, Trudy Carter, Sydney Schneider, Tierney Wiltshire, Kiki Van Zanten, Tiffany Cameron, Chinelo Asher, Shade Adamola Kern, Alison Swaby, and Chantel Swaby, the Swaby sisters, Vianne Sampson, Kayla McCoy, Rebecca Spencer, Jody Brown, and Michaela Days. Um, so that is the squad announcement. I don't think there's going to be any changes, um, but if there is any changes, then I'll definitely be sure. I'll be certain to let you guys know. Um so, yeah, I did ask you guys a question earlier on. I want you guys to tell me the names of the players that made the call-up, that made the team for the last call-up where our CONCACAF women's qualifiers are concerned, but unfortunately haven't made this month's squad list. Let me know if you guys can think of who those players are. Funny enough, we've actually touched on two of them so far. So there's a, another three players that's, that hasn't that haven't made that call up. So let me know. I want to see if you guys have been paying attention to your 
squad list. And like I said, don't bother going over to Google and cheating and then giving me the answers. So let me know if you guys can, if you guys have managed to identify the team, the players who haven't made this month's squad announcement. Might make it a little bit easier for you guys. I might actually go ahead and bring up the bring up last month's squad announcement just to make things a little bit easier for you guys. Um, in the meantime, let me go ahead and um drop something in the comment section for you guys. So there you have it. If you guys fancy joining me on live, live, live stream, um, go ahead and click that button. My only rule is to make it clean. Keep it clean. So that simply means no swearing because you never know who is watching. Never know someone might be watching with their kid in the room. Last thing we want to do is be a bad role model for them so do you go ahead and make it clean keep it professional and also try to have a well-lit background yes mr scott yes i'm pretty sure i read out her name i'm 100 certain i read out her name um Unless I was going a little bit too slow for you, I'm sure I did read out Van Santen's name. The squad looks pretty like you hope this group can get the job done, would go good. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to get between you and Jasmine, okay? I'm leaving you and Jasmine to that one, hot chili. I have nothing to say where my team is concerned, so... Good spot, good spot, good spot, Travis. Good spot, good, good spot. Um, you're talking about Gabrielle Gale there. Good spot. Might make it a little bit easy for you guys. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and bring up the last squad announcement. There we go. Let me try and bring up that last squad announcement for you guys. I might have to take myself off screen. You probably can't hear me. Oh, you probably won't be able to hear me. I'm going to keep that on screen for a brief period. And then after that, you guys should be able to identify who, which players haven't made the trip. Definitely, you know, who have made the trip this time round. And we have the reintroduction of Marlo Sweatman and also Paige Bailey Gale as well. Um, yeah, she didn't. You don't see her name on the squad announcement, do you? I'm going to go back again and look at that squad announcement with you guys. The Days Twins. So you guys are saying Rebecca Spencer. No, Rebecca Spencer's name is there. Um, sure, I read out Rebecca Spencer's name to you guys. Right? I did scroll to the bottom of that list and read out Rebecca Spencer's name along alongside Kayla McCoy, um, Jody Brown, and Michaela Days. 
Um, I'm sure I read out that one for you guys, but it seems like Travis is the only one that's on the ball so far. Um, he's identified no Logan McFadden. Um, so her name hasn't been mentioned in the squad announcement. Paige, I thought you'd be all over this. I thought you, considering that you know the women's team, like the back of your hand, I thought you'd be the first one out the blocks with the players who um, aren't available for this month's international fixtures. Let me go back and see what you guys are saying. Travis is saying good squad. Travis, I want to ask you, what's your prediction? Last time you wasn't, I mean, you was close. You was close. Um, you said 14-0 complete. Ham that is not even hammering. That's, that's a complete humiliation. I think you wanted that one to happen over um, Grenada. You wanted 14-0 over Grenada. I have to ask you, what's your score prediction against um, Cayman Islands? What are you going for against Cayman Islands, um, Travis? And you guys in the comments section as well. That's both Travis, Travis and Travis McKenzie. Let me know what you guys' score prediction is for the first game. Um, taking place this weekend against the Cayman Islands. So, um... So let's see. Let's go through this list again. Think we yes, 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 yes. You have identified there is no Logan McFadden in this squad list. I don't know if you guys could actually see that squad list when I um when I brought it up. I think you could, but I don't know if you guys could actually see the squad list clearly. But yes, no, there is no Logan McFadden. Good evening. How are you? How are you doing? Big up yourself, Island Cart. So um, let's see if I can actually bring that up for you guys. Judging by you guys' reaction in the comments section, take it that the majority of you, what is going on with my screen now? What is going on? Okay, there we are. Judging by the... What's this all about, Travis, from USA? What's that all about? What is that in response to? I'm not sure what that one is. I'm sure if you're responding to me or if you're responding to someone in the comments section. Um, obviously, you're referring to the Days Twins. <laughs> Travis, you sound like you're shy that you don't want to um, make a score prediction. But I would love if we went into double figures against... The Cayman Islands, given what's at stake in that blockbuster on home soil. Next week, Sunday for me, that will be Saturday for you guys. Um, against the, sorry, um, what did I say? That will be Wednesday for me, the 13th of April. Um, so that would be, be Tuesday for you guys. And then this Sunday, 1 a.m., if you are based in the UK, it's time to face off against Cayman Islands. So that will be 1 a.m. if you're based in the UK. And then 12 a.m. on Sunday for the blockbuster against Dominican Republic. Which new player are you referring to? 
Um, I don't know. I asked someone this in the comments section. When was the last time you watched the reggae girls play? Because the biggest names, um, biggest information there from our team announcement is the return of Marlo Sweatman and Paige Bailey Gail. So um, I'm not really sure um, which new player you're referring to because I'm not sure when was the last time, I don't know, the, the last time you watched the Reggae Girls. So if it was last year or the year before, then you're going to be seeing a few fresh faces that you're not familiar to, not familiar with. Saying we're going to destroy Cayman Islands this time round with these top players that the winner of course. <laughs> I know that you're in heavy, heavy, heavy support and he um favor of Marlo Sweatman and Paige Bailey Gale. Um Travis is going with a 11 nil. I'm gonna hold you to that, Travis, because I would love to see a complete embarrassing scoreline for Cayman Islands. At this point, I, I really don't have no heart or sympathy for our opponents. So yeah, I would I would love to see us top them in and send them to their belt to their bed with double figures against them. So Island Cart, let me know when was the last time you tuned in to the reggae girls not sure when last you watched the reggae girls play um but like i said there might be a few new faces there for you to cast your eyes upon but all depends on when last you actually watched them play um Fresh, Mr. Fresh God himself. How are you, sir? How are you doing? Let me know how you're doing, Fresh. What do you make of the squad announcement? Let me know what you make of the squad announcement, Fresh. Want to know what you make of the squad announcement. I'll say Jasmine is going for a 9-0. Okay. Jasmine's going for a 9-0. 9-0. Okay. Okay. I still want that double figures, but I'll, I'll, I'll settle with 9-0 if that's the case. I'll probably see, probably get another double from Jody Brown and um, Bunny as well. Or who knows? Maybe this time round we get a double from Tiffany. Would be great to see if given the chance. It'd be great to see Gray, Raya Gray, put her name on the score sheet. Same goes for Shade and also for Paige Bailey Gale as well. I hope they don't take my prediction personally, like Grenada. Yeah, Grenada were frustrating. They, in a good way, um, to um Grenada, they were frustrating. Um, could see that they intentionally stifled out our rhythm. All this stop and start, stop and start. Fair play to them because they were not up for an embarrassing scoreline. In terms of football, I mean, in terms of football scoreline, six one is still embarrassing. But um, with that, I'm sure they were trying and they executed it fairly decent they were um decent in not allowing us to hit those double figures um given what happened with grenada and um the dominican republic the dominican republic beating them nine nil on the opening day i'm pretty sure they didn't want nothing like a repeat of that fair play to them they managed to get themselves on the score sheet managed to score a goal against us and it was a neatly taken goal as well as as well i'm going to give them credit where credit is deserved um fair play to them just tuning in never heard the squad announcement could you absolutely fresh you don't even have to ask twice i most certainly will do that for you blair video is going for seven nil jamaica they were wasting time <laughs> I have to laugh. I really have to laugh because you know what? If that was their, what do you want to call it? If that was their approach to the game and if that was their way of ma trying to manage the game, they got away with it with certain periods, within certain periods of that match, for sure. 
that was what they brought to the game. Um, Stifloth, our, our rhythm, disrupt horror play. And they did that on a number of occasions, falling down like a bunch of dominoes. Um, fair play to Grenada. It's funny now. Um, it won't be funny if they manage to actually um, dent our hopes of qualifying for the World Cup. But yeah, it was um, an interesting approach to the game from Grenada. How am I not getting your notification? I don't know. I'm disappointed, coach. I don't know why you're not getting the notification. No idea why you're not getting the notification. Mr. Everton Jackson says I won't give, an, give a prediction, but I will very be very disappointed if we score if we score less than if we don't score less than 10 goals. Is that is that what you're saying? Um, you're greedy like myself. I like it. Um, Karimi is saying Jamaica. Well, Mexico, Jamaica, and Suriname in our nation league zone. It's the same squad plus Bailey Gale. Uh, not quite. There's a few dropouts there um, for a number of reasons. But yeah, you've hit the nail on the head there, haven't you, with regards to Marla Sweatman and Paige Bailey Gale? They've made their return to the squad. Long awaited return there for Marla Sweatman. Delighted to see her back in the team. And I'm sure she'll add some creativity there to the side. What happened today? We Oh, no, 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 Karumi. Karumi, we're not talking about those guys today. We are not talking about those guys tonight, Karumi. Definitely. I don't even know who they are. I have no idea who you're referring to there, coach. No idea who you're referring to. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go back and switch on that Shared screen again. I know some of you are just tuning in and you want to know about that squad announcement. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that shared button for you guys once more. Um, so here's how it's looking. And these are the important dates again for you guys to put these ones in your diary. Hopefully you can see the names on screen. Not like it matters because I will be reading out the squad announcement for you guys. So Cayman Islands on the 9th of April. Pollock followed by the Dominican Republic on the 12th this is the blockbuster fixture that we're all anticipating just hoping that we top these guys in embarrassingly as well Hope we, hopefully we can embarrass them on um home soil you notice with me whether it's competition when it's competitive or friendly once it's international football i'm all for embarrassment just as long as it's not us so here's how we're looking guys in regards to our call up the international um week is uh, the international break i should say has finally arrived for us us being the reggae girls and here's how we're looking you will, you would notice if you're reading the screen for yourself you will notice there is a return there for Paige bailey gale and marlo sweatman mariah gray is back as well um she was there for the last uh qualifiers windows as were a number of the core players Yasmin Jameson, Sashana Campbell, Khadija Shaw, Trudy Carter, Sydney Schneider, Tierney Wiltshire, Kiki Van Zanten, Tiffany Cameron, Chinalu Asha, Shade Adamolakun, Alison Swaby, Chantel Swaby, Vian Sampson. And if we scroll down, we have Kayla McCoy, Rebecca Spencer, Jody Brown, and Michaela Days. So that is, we're going to call that one half of the Days Twins. Um, there we have it with a name the list of players um, who are in this month's CONCACAF Women's Qualifiers. You will notice um, Alika Keen's name isn't on the list. Um, and if you have been following my Instagram, you would have noticed that Tiffany Cameron's Eto FC, they took on Marla Sweatman's Victoria over in the top division of, of the women's um, football there. And Marlo Sweatman's team came out on top against, where is her name, Tiffany Cameron. They were 2-0 winners over Cameron's side on that occasion. Unfortunately, Alika Keane was absent and that was due to illness. So that would explain why her name isn't in the squad sheet. Earlier when I could have sworn that I saw uh, Alika Keane's name, but clearly that's not the case. Um, and with that, I am disappointed, but hopefully she will have or she should be on the path of a speedy recovery. Disappointed that her name isn't there, but like I said, she missed last weekend's game due to 
illness. So hopefully she's on the path of a steady recovery. You know what, Travis McKenzie, I can't read that comment that you, you just said something. I can't read what you're writing, though. That looks like it's in a foreign language. Um, so I can't read that comment, Travis. Sorry. You know, I would respond if I could read that comment. But unfortunately, I can't. I can't read that particular comment. Can read all the other comments, though, but just not that one. Women football. <laughs> Oh, God. Um, Bunny Start on score. So, Bunny, if she's with Bunny Start, she will score. I mean, we see that at club and international level, don't we? I think this is a perfect opportunity to go back. Take it back a step. I've already gone through this, but considering some of you are just, are just tuning in, some of you have just tuned in. So, I guess we can... um. Take a look at how things are shaping up. We can actually backstep a little bit and look at our last two games. I'm wishing her a speedy recovery. Yes, speedy recovery to Miss Keen. Hopefully she can shake this one off. I'm not sure what the illness is. Didn't ask for any details. Um, I just decided to leave that one as it was. Um, but hopefully it's nothing concerning and she can just shake that one off and bounce back in time for her next game at uh, where club football is concerned they've got some tasty games happening over there in the hungarian top division for both marla sweatman and tiffany cameron so keep an eye on their next game i'm sure that one will be mouth watering for you if you are a reggae girls supporter right so let's go back good evening to yourself miss brown how you doing how's your week been so far well we're just at the start of the week but how's things shaping up hope it's looking lively your end right let's go back over to our table let's go look at the table actually um at a table and scroll down this is where we're at group c so let's click on probably not going to work but it works for dominican republic we don't want dominican republic so here's what we're going to do we're going to go back and look at our first two games just a gentle reminder this is all about the concacaf women's championship qualifiers and we are at round one right so we look at how things started off it was on home soil February 17th against Bermuda. 4 0 scoreline there. Jodie Brown opening the scoring in the 21st minute. That was doubled. The scoring was doubled, doubled 10 minutes later, thanks to Trudy Carter. And as you can see, the skipper, Khadija Shah, netting two goals there in the latter stages of the second 45. 4 0 winners on home soil against Bermuda. Then we had a away trip to Grenada and this this game had some entertainment some some jokes for all the wrong reasons there um not gonna draw out Grenada too much or focus too much on Grenada but I don't really need to tell you what the joke was all about if you was watching this particular fixture this one you can most certainly read this one for yourself this one should be large enough on screen for you if you don't want to read it for yourself let me go ahead and read it for you 6-1 winners against Grenada and this one was a interesting game, wasn't it? A cracker, absolute cracker for goal there from Tiffany Cameron to give us the opening goal inside the 27th minute. You can see this one on screen for yourself. Jodie Brown with two goals to her name. Her club, her captain, not club captain, international teammates, her skipper, Khadija Bunny Shaw. Two goals to her name as well. And I safe to say, safe to say, surely, Alika Keen, goal of the tournament so far, right in the 73rd minute. What an absolute belter that was from Keen. If you have not managed to cast your eye on that goal, please do yourself a favor and head over to YouTube and find that goal because it is well worth a watch. Alika Keen of an absolute bullet of a strike. No goal, goalkeeper could save that one, and that one rattled the back of the net, and rightly so. A little bit disappointed that we won't be able to see Keen this time round, where our qualifiers are concerned. But as we have stated already, some of you, some of you in the comments section, have already touched on it. Speedy recovery to Keen. Now, this is where we're at. This is where it all starts off again, where we resume play, starting off on Sunday 
1 a.m. 1 a.m. if you are based in the UK, that is. We're taking on Cayman Islands. Cayman Islands are sat in fourth place, um, just one shy of being rock bottom. Rock bottom is currently occupied by Grenada. And we take on Cayman Islands away from home. So write down this date and check the time. Again, I am six hours ahead of you if you're based in Jamaica. And this is where everything, some of you are probably going to be sat on the edge of your seat with this one. Wednesday, so that will be next week, Wednesday. Um, Tuesday, if you're in Jamaica, Wednesday, 12 a.m., if you're based in London like myself, this is where things will be lively on home soil once more against Dominican Republic. Wondering why is it lively? Well, all you have to do is look at the league standing. As you can see, six, six points apiece with the Dominican Republic. Only thing that separates us as things stand is the goal difference they're out on 13 and we have nine all matches played so far to a piece for all teams involved so two two mouth-watering game coming up the biggest game of the qualifiers so far is against dominican republic right let me take this off quickly see what you guys are saying in the comments section <laughs> you know, I'm not going to let you let me get carried away now, Teja. I don't disagree with you, by the way. Last time you went, not even you, Travis came over here with his positivity, which I love. But then Travis sold me a dream talking about 14 nil. We didn't give, give them 14 nil, but Travis had half of us in the comment section, including myself, all hyped up for 14 nil. One player didn't make it because of the virus. I don't want to speculate, um, but I do know that at least one player um, isn't feeling well at the moment. But I had no confirmation as to whether it was to do with COVID or if it's just a regular illness. People need to remember as well that regular illnesses um, is still a thing. Like a player can be sick, unavailable, and it doesn't necessarily have to come down to covid but these days when a player is sick everybody just link it to covid but i myself i was told that she was unwell which is why she didn't make the game against marlo sweatman over the weekend but i didn't actually ask about her sickness sometimes i like to leave personal stuff alone um if people wish to share the information they will but i don't like to get myself involved with personal matters you think we will get our best 11 for the quality no i love this question i love this question i hope so i hope so because you know last time around i can see why um the gaffer, the gaffer being Mr. Vin Blaine. I can see why he gave opportunities to players here and there. That's usually the case, isn't it? When you're an interim head coach, you don't want to step on people's toes. You also want to bring fairness to the table. You don't want no players sitting in the dressing room being a little bit upset because apparently you didn't give them a fair chance. Safe to say, just about every player that accepted their call-up and was at the last um, camp received a decent um element of fairness where opportunity is concerned grenada fans screaming for every block <laughs> yeah grenada they came with a um game plan and the game plan was to stop jamaica's rhythm fair play to them when i hear sunday i was confused but then i remember that it's yes yeah, so that's why i have to keep on explaining myself that look i am in the uk and i'm also six hours ahead of you even me i'm confused sometimes i'm like wait when is game day because uh, i would hear someone say something like saturday but really the game day is on sunday so sometimes i'm even confused that's what i'm saying guys um keep an eye on the fixture for yourself where your base because I might say Sunday, but in reality, game day is Saturday for you. Exactly. Everyone got their chance, so nobody should be able to, you know, 
be feeling downbeat or be feeling as if they're not part of the coach's plan or feel as if they are not a coach's favorite. Those conversations are usually brought up. Who is the coach's favorite? Why is this person getting more opportunity in, compar in comparison to their teammate? This time round, I don't think there's any player that can say that they've not been given a opportunity. Yes, you can probably say that you were given less minutes, but at the end of the day, that's always going to be the case. It's just football. It's about you taking your chances when it comes. So if at the last um, window, if you were only given 20 minutes, next time you're given an opportunity, try to double that. Try to take that to maybe 40, 60, 80. Try to push to where you're in a position where you're given the full 90. Um, so it's all in the, in the players' hands as things stand at present. When we're going to stop on build a chemistry, we just keep calling players over and over. Karumi, don't let Teja hear you say this, okay? I'm going to protect you as you are a guna, so don't let Teja hear you say these things. Um, I hear you, the chop and change. I think I asked um, Teja this earlier on. I think I asked him about the chop and change. Is that healthy for the squad when we're chopping, chopping and changing? Obviously, it's different when you have players that's already in the pipeline. So when I'm talking about players in the pipeline, I'm talking about Marlowe Sweatman. Nobody has any qualms over Marlowe Sweatman being reintroduced into the pipeline because she's been there. She was there at the last World Cup cycle. It makes perfect sense to call her up again and give her, reintroduce her to the team. And it will be um, somewhat of a newish set up for her in terms of players that she's probably not familiar with so even her she still has a um a point to prove she has to remind everyone who she is she has to remind herself remind people why she's called my Mar my Mar uh, marlo sweat uh, sweatman and why she's not to be slept on well player like marlo i'm not necessarily putting too much pressure on her shoulders given back given that she's just coming back into the squad after being out for some time and also the expectation as well. Probably, it's probably a bit of a balanced perspective there where Marla is concerned. She's coming back into the squad with one, a point to prove. Um, also, she pretty much has to prove a point um, just because she wants to be considered for that um, next qualifying window, regardless of how this one pans out the next time there is a qualifying window for any tournament or whether it's a friendly. She wants her name to be on that team sheet, whether it be to start or to come off come off the bench as an impact sub. Um, she has plenty to put on show where her name is concerned and to prove why she's been missed as well. So the favor, the balance is probably in Marla's favor as things stand because um, we already know what she's capable of. But now she has to go out there and prove herself once more. And also she's coming into a setup that has a whole new set of fans. So play, so fan, fans who are not used to seeing her play. Some people have never seen a Marla Sweatman play. So now she has to go out there and let them know that I'm Marla Sweatman and this is what I'm all about. So, um. Best of luck to her. I like how you're thinking. I like how you're moving like a villain. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love that, Mr. McKenzie. Yeah, and I can see that happening as well. Oddly enough, I can see that happening, and that would be mouth-watering. Actually, matter of fact, let's go and look at... um. Bermuda. Let's go look at Bermuda. Um, that's a good shout. I know I touched on them earlier on. Um, let's go and look at Dominican Republic. Let's go look at their game. Okay. Okay. So they're playing on Saturday. Say Saturday. Say Saturday, 12 o'clock. So that would be Friday for you guys. So that should be 6 p.m on friday if you are based in jamaica right so we can keep our eyes on that game It'd be nice and they're actually playing that one on home soil hosting bermuda so it'd be nice if bermuda could go over there and clip their wings would love that the chopping and changing isn't drastic though it isn't um drastic it is a bit we can we can say um that so far it's been like for like because it hasn't been disruptive, has it? 
Um, so I do agree with you in that regard. Uh, but I still get where uh, Karumi is coming from. I think what Karumi is hinting at is he perhaps, I can't speak for him, but he seems as if he's, he's more going down the route of saying at this point, um, would it have made sense to introduce an entirely new player to the squad? Not necessarily players who are already in the pipeline. Marlo Sweatman, nobody's going to have any qualms with Marlo Sweatman being recalled into the team because she's been in the pipeline. She was there at the last uh, World Cup qualifiers. She was there at the last... Um, she was there... Like I said, at the last qualifiers so people are more than familiar to Marlo Sweatman people know what she's all about so she's been in the pipeline let me see something from my notes Mr Porter good evening to yourself Mr Porter how are you how are you doing how are you doing sir <laughs> okay um let's see what you guys are saying in the comment section heard a coach said that we need to build chemis chemistry that is key yeah i mean when you're chopping and changing it is difficult to build on your chemistry um but yeah i think we can use perhaps use someone like marlo because she's she's been there for more than a hot minute so she knows what this team is all about um she's familiar with the core of the squad as well she's been committed to jamaica long before jamaica became a um team that people want to jump on for the bandwagon sake so she's she's been around so it makes sense to um recall someone like marla sweatman to the team but i do get you in regards to um chemistry building i do get you Let's see. And that's actually one of the players that I'm absolutely buzzing to uh to see. I'm absolutely buzzing to see um someone like Marla Sweatman back in that team. <laughs> wow. Swear. Trying to see if I can bring something up um on screen for you guys. Uh let's see if it's gonna work. Good evening to yourself, Mr. Porter, if I haven't said that already. My apologies. Uh, let's see. See if I can actually send something to my... I don't think I can. All right, I'm having a bit of a technical problem here again, guys. Let's see. Hmm. All right, okay. If I can send this to my uh, desktop, I will. I'll keep trying in the meantime. No disrespect to team, to no team, but we must hear in Cayman, Cayman and Dominican Republic. What do you mean by that, coach? Are you saying that we mustn't fear them? We mustn't fear Dominican Re Republic and uh, Cayman Islands? Let me know. I think that's what you're trying to say. 
watch for Bermuda to go at Dominican Republic because they still have themselves with a chance of getting second place. And yeah, I think a lot of people brushed aside Bermuda. Wasn't the easiest game against Bermuda, was it? If we look back at Bermuda, Bermuda are also in our group. I think it's safe to say that scoreline 4 0 against Bermuda. Yeah. Um, it wasn't a small sailing victory for those of you who didn't watch that game. So, like I said, I'm a massive, massive fave. I can't bring this up, you know. This is frustrating me. I think I'm going to have to just type it in. <sighs> just want to show you guys. Um, so, let's see if I can just type this in. Because, like I said, I'm a massive, massive fan of this particular player. And I'm, I was bursting. Literally ended work. Closed off from work earlier on. And then looked at my phone and saw the squad announcement. Saw her name on the squad sheet. And I was buzzing absolutely buzzing because i want to see players given the chance particularly players who have been in the pipeline for the makeup been in the trenches i should say i want to see players who have been in the trenches for jamaica i want to see them given more opportunity i don't want to see them just shun to the wayside Well, this is absolutely annoying me. Um, all right, let me send this one to my email and then open it up. This is so long-winded. Sorry, guys. I um, want to give you guys uh, something to dive into. <sighs> Let's see if I can um, send this one to my emails. Hopefully it opens up. Let me see what you guys are saying in the comments section. These people are just talking and are quality. I would love to see Drew Spence. Well, Mr. Colin Clark, if you are just tuning in, that would make sense. What you're saying makes sense. But if you actually watch from the beginning, you would see that we've talked about all the other players. Tonight's focus does have a strong emphasis on Marlo Sweatman and Paige Bailey Gale. Why you're asking is because they've made a return, a welcome return to the women's senior team. So that is the reason why we're talking about Paige Bailey Gale and Marlo Sweatman and both players respectively. They deserve to have the spotlight shone on them. Um, especially a player like Marlo Sweatman as well. She's one of the players, I think it's safe to say she's a fan favorite. Like I said, all the time I do a live stream, people are always talking about Marlo Sweatman. Right, 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 right. Um, let's see. Now what? When when there is where's my IT guy? I need my IT guy to come and help me. I'm having a little bit of problems there, um, technical difficulties there. I hope Vin Blaine gave the for, the upper forward some minutes when Khadija and jo Jody score. Hope him give Van Zanten and Days minutes. But what about what about Gray? Feel like me and you have had this back and forth about Gray already, you know, Mister Scott. What about Gray? You know, in favor of Gray, you not know, in favor of giving Gray her equal opportunity as well. Um, feel like me and you've been here before. So let me know your thoughts on Gray. Um, not disagreeing with you on Van Zanten and Days. But then that depends on the scoreline. So at what point do you substitute? I don't see that happening, by the way. I don't see us substituting um, Khadija or Jody. I don't think it's going to happen because um, these are the games that it should be ruthless. Ruthless approach until the final whistle. So that's the reason why I'm saying I don't see them being substituted. But maybe... Maybe if you're right with Travis' prediction, I think Travis, Travis is going for a cutthroat uh, prediction. So if, if their prediction comes true, then maybe you might see 
Jodi and Khadija substituted um, during the latter stages of both those upcoming fixtures. Right, this is really, this is absolutely doing my head in. Um, Colin, I think you have something to do with this, you know, because as soon as I start talking about Marlo giving heaps of praises to Marlo, you come and you intervene. And all of a sudden, my desktop is giving me problems where Marlo Sweatman is concerned. Um, Hmm. You know, you've come along and given me some problems there, Colin. Let's see. See what you guys are saying in the comments section. I might have to sort that one out for another, another uh, live stream um, where Marlowe's Sweatman is concerned. I always like Bermuda. They're a good team. Plus, they look tricky. They look, they look in. Oh, my God. Really? Really? Hot chili? If Vin Blaine starts Paige Bailey Gill and Khadija and Kate Paige Bailey Gale, Paige Bailey Gill, Brown and Khadija up top against Cayman. Oh my gosh, world record 15. <laughs> Gray, oh yes, she can get some minutes. Never remember she is um Never forget she is good. Okay, now now we're back on good terms there, Scott. Now we're back on good terms. Mr. Devin Smith, good morning to yourself. I'm live from New York. Okay, good evening to yourself, Mr. Smith. How are you doing? It is Colin. As soon as Colin came over and started questioning why we're bringing heaps of praises to, to Marlo Sweatman and... Paige Bailey, all of a sudden stuff starts shutting down. So I'm with you on that. I'm I'm blaming Colin, of course. I know he will start Tiffany Cameron or Shade. I'm not so I'm not talking about these those top class players. Tiffany Cameron is in some better put putting some better cross. Oh, okay, I get you. I don't know what your um I was a little bit confused there. Okay, um I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know. Maybe on the other occasion she might tune in. Um she might tune in. She's in good form. Tiffany Cameron's in good form for both club and country. So um she's done what she needed what she's needed to do, what was required of her over the last window the last conquer cup women's qualifiers window so me and you teja me and you tend to sit on the opposite side of the fence don't we where, where certain players are concerned nothing wrong with that but we tend to sit definitely on the opposite side of the fence quite interesting hmm Okay, let me go back. Um, let me see what you guys are saying in the comment section. Just trying to get up a piece there on, on Marler, but I think I'm going to have to save this one for another day. Um, but if you have been following Marler, then you would know that she's been in the trenches with us, a bit like your Khadija, a bit like your Bunny. Um, so there's no chop and changes where Mahler is concerned because she's been in the pipeline with Jamaica. With the core, the core players, I should say.
just annoying that I can't actually bring this up on screen for you guys. That's true. Yes, Paige, Paige Bailey Gail got everything like Jodie Brown. So I can tell who your favorite players are, Paige. I can definitely tell who your favorite players are. Everybody's got their favorites, don't they? Um, I almost give up on this piece because it doesn't seem like it's going to work for me um let's see let's see let's see something else okay um let's see something else see if i can bring this up for you guys and if you guys are just tuning in and you want to know about the squad announcement then let me know and i will go ahead and bring that up for you guys i'll go ahead and read out the the squad sheet Also, um, considering it is International Football Week, where the women's team is concerned, um, this week, that's what the focus will be on. So I don't think I'll be doing any content on the the men's team. If I do do content, then it probably would be um, updates, league updates for their respective clubs. But the bulk of this week's content will be focused around the reggae girls trying to find something for you guys but my god i'm having a, a bad time here i might go for some nostalgia for you guys courtney douglas on the squad where you see courtney douglas or is that a question is that a question All right, um, let's see if I can bring something up because I feel like one or two of you are playing with Sweatman's name in the in the comment section, you know. So I might have to just come up and give you guys a little gentle reminder of just how far she's coming from with this. Um this women's team. see what can come up that's you're asking me a question there um sir porter if it is a question no she's not in the team um if you are asking me a question i hope so i hope she needs that's what i'm saying if you're new to jamaican football then she has um double double expectation weighing on her shoulder obviously we know what she's capable of but if you're new to jamaican football you're probably wondering who is marlo sweatman so marlo have to go out there and um remind people again of who she is and what she's all about gonna go back down to yes sir porter yes sir if you need me to go ahead and read out that squad announcement again then do let me know i'll show you guys just how far marlo sweatman is coming from for those of you who are new to this reggae girls team probably gonna upset a few of you because you'll be seeing players that aren't aren't part of this succession plan where the women's team is concerned as things stand um so let's go ahead and look at this where is it lovely picture right here you guys should be able to see that on your screen let's have a little bit of a zoom come zoomed in as much as i can there um you guys can see 
with a printed number nine in the center of her chest, Miss Marlo Sweatman there. And I'm sure you guys are familiar with all of the players, actually, if you've been following the team over the years. Again, might cause a little bit of an upset here because you might see one or two player that's not part of, doesn't appear to be part of Jamaica's succession plans. Um, say maybe at least two players uh, definitely don't appear to be part of Jamaica's succession plan. Uh, and then obviously we have at least one player out due to personal reasons from this squad. So there you go. That's how far Marla Sweatman has been coming from. So, you know, you got to put some respect on her name. I have to give you guys a gentle reminder of how far she's coming from. Yes, I would like to hear the squad. Okay, Mr. Porter. I'm going to give you... Exactly, exactly. She's been around. She's been around the trenches. Been around the trenches. So she's familiar to this World Cup cycle. She's familiar She's been there. She's been around. Um, so this is not a new environment for her. Um, she's been around her squad. She's been around her core players. She knows what it's all about to help Jamaica um, achieve success. So she's been around. She's one of those players, like I said, been in the pipeline. So this isn't nothing new for her. Probably new in terms of teammates. Um, wouldn't have been familiar or won't be familiar with a few of the teammates. The newly recruits for her is probably new recruits for us. We've seen their faces uh, here and there. But yeah, Marla's been around in the pipeline. So she's, she's not new to this. Okay, um, so Coach Devin Porter is saying that he wants to hear the team sheet again. So I'll go ahead and do that for him and see something. One second, guys. Okay. All right, let's go and bring up that team sheet again. I don't know how many times I've actually read out this team sheet, but if you guys are just tuning in, you're tuning in right in the nick of time. Because I'm about to read out that team sheet once more. Let me close down some of my tabs because some of them are pretty much irrelevant. Um, Coach Porter, this, this, this one is for you since you requested the team sheet announcement. I don't know if that means you've been doing some scouting there, Coach. Sounds like you've been doing some scouting. Um, you guys see that? You guys should be able to see that one, right? Um, I hope you can. So, yeah, let's go again. Um, at the top there, you can see Paige Bailey Gale. You can also see Marlo Sweatman, Mariah Gray, Yasmin Jameson, Sashana Campbell, Khadija Shaw, Trudy Carter, Sydney Schneider, Tierney Wiltshire, Kiki Van Zanten, Tiffany Cameron, Chinilu Asher, Shade Adamalakun, Alison Swaby, Chantel Swaby, Vian Samson. If we scroll down, we see Kayla McCoy, Rebecca Spencer, Jordi Brown, and Michaela Days. So there's your gentle reminder there of the squad announcement. Um, and you will notice no key, no Alika key there. Just a gentle reminder again. Key missed last weekend's 2-0 defeat at the hands of Marlo Sweatman's team, and she was unavailable due to illness. Um, so I trust that it's more of the same there where Keen is concerned. I mean, it's no different to the last window. Last window, we also saw the three plate, the three keepers that you're referring to. So that would be Rebecca, Yaz, and also Sydney as well. No changes there. I guess it is a bit of a safe, safe decision to go with. God forbid we, at the moment, I think it is looking like Rebecca is our number one goalkeeper as things stand. <laughs> happy that you're happy. Um, 
Sir Porter. As things stand there, it seems that Rebecca is our number one goalkeeper. Unfortunately, things haven't been going well at club level for Schneider. So she is a little bit out of favor. Could explain why she made her recent transfer. So with that said, lack of, lack of game time at club level, that would only mean she's likely to be a little bit rusty in terms of performance wise. We're not going to doubt Sydney Schneider's potential because class is always permanent but she is she isn't racking up enough minutes at game time or enough expected minutes there at sorry at um club level not racking up haven't racked up enough uh minutes there at club level and uh, yaz as well so yeah it just goes back to someone said winston said um why is there three goalkeepers we don't want to think of worst case scenario but you know, judging by performance-wise opportunities, game played at club level where Yaz and Sydney is concerned, it does make sense to actually have both of them there if in case um, what we don't want to happen is made to be reality. And I'm not going to say it because I, I don't want to jinx nothing for us. So, yeah, it does make... For me, it's not an issue having the three goalkeepers there because we saw it last time round and... Hopefully, we won't need to rely on Yaz or Sydney uh, because if that is the case, then obviously that would be down to um, an injury and we don't want no one to be injured. But it does make sense to have Yaz and Sydney there if needed. I'd rather have the both of them there than to only have one. I really think it's safe to go into um, a, a qualifiers, pivotal uh, fixtures there with two goalkeepers as unsafe. <laughs> Is that the only thing you're not happy with, Sir Port? The Sir Port has been a while since you've been on my channel. So how, how are you looking tonight? Would love to have you come on here with me. I'm going to be here for a while because I haven't actually done a live stream with you guys for... Um, call it three or four days so if sir porter if you are available would be lovely to have you join me on live stream and that goes for anyone actually if you can just go ahead and click that link there and join me on live screen or live stream i should say that would be great So, yeah, guys, I'm going to be here for a while, maybe for another hour, um, just to make sure. Exactly. Safety first. I have no qualms if um, Yaz, Sydney, and Rebecca receiving a call up and being part of that squad. A matter of fact, I would be a bit nervous if I didn't see Yaz or Sydney. If I only saw Rebecca and or, and, and or Yaz or Sydney, I'll be a little bit uncomfortable with that because the unpredictable can happen at any time, right? And yeah, like I said, these are two crucial, crucial games. So we have to go with three goalkeepers, no doubt. Yeah, I think it's safe to have a th absolutely safe to have a third goalkeeper. 100% safe to have a cold um, co goalkeeper. Mr. Scott, how about I make an exception for you? How about you come on and you turn off your camera? I don't think you're ugly, by the way. I don't think you're ugly. You have way too much confidence to... I'm not going to call nobody ugly, but your confidence says otherwise. I don't think you're ugly at all. Um, all Sydney needs is chance at club. Yeah, she hasn't been getting those chances, even at her club. And that is usual protocol when you move to a new club. It's going to take a while for you to knock the number one goalkeeper off their position, isn't it? It's a matter of opportunity and making the most of opportunity. But with opportunity, you have to have fairness. It can't just be a case where she's only given opportunity um, once in a blue moon. Like once every two months, she's starting a, a, a game. Um, it's not going to work like that. So hopefully I'm just sitting and waiting and praying that where Kansas City current are concerned, I'm hoping that things go bad for the number one goalkeeper and Sydney Schneider can take her position. Sorry, um, but obviously we want the best for our players. Definitely, definitely. Um, sorry for that. <laughs> mm. 
But once she does, I believe she will get the minutes. Yeah, she was all about consistency um, where Sydney's concerned, isn't it? Definitely all about consistency where Sydney is concerned. And once she's given the opportunity, I'm sure she'll make the most of it. But it has to be fair, fair and equal opportunity. Um, and I'm sure we'll see Sydney return to that number one position where club and country is concerned. So things have probably gone out of favor for Sydney where her um, country is concerned and also at club level. But I think um, with time, she will slowly, slowly return to the number one position. We do have a few players. That's okay, Sir Porter. I'm not going to hold it against you, sir. Definitely not going to hold it against you. Um, get your rest. Thank you for tuning in, by the way. Even though you're tired, thank you so much for tuning in. Last time we have a we had a bigger squad. Um, we'll need to probe some questions to Vin Blaine in the press conference. Haven't received any information as of yet where when the press conference will be taking place. Actually, hold on. Oh, okay. That gave me a heart attack. I was thinking, what is going on here? Okay, so this is about the reggae boys, but we're not focusing on the reggae boys. Just got some news on my phone, but this is about the reggae boys. About the draw for the CONCACAF Nations League. So tonight isn't about the reggae boys. So um, if you guys want me to touch on that, um, I can. But tonight and the rest of the week is about the reggae girls. But if you guys want me to touch on the CONCACAF Nations League, the 2020-2023 CONCACAF Nations League presented by Qatar Airways. If you guys want me to touch on that, then let me know. And we can drift a little and talk about the, the men's team. That's coming up soon, isn't it? Um, group stage coming up in June, June of this year. I think someone actually touched on the group announcement earlier on in the comment section. <laughs> so we'll be meeting our friendly neighbors. I call them call them neighbors, but our our rep, our rivals there, our friendly rivals, Mexico. We meeting them again in Suriname. Would you guys make of that? Let's see if I can bring something up for you guys. Um, I think it's probably a little bit too soon. Okay, let's see um, something for you guys. Group Orion, let me look at this group. Which group Orion? We are in group A. So where is group A? I can't why can't I see group group A? Hope we don't lose 2-1 versus Mexico. <laughs> no, so difficult being a backup goalkeeper. Difficult. That is one of the most, it's one of the hardest positions to um try and occupy. 
the goalkeeper position because once you're a number one it's pretty, it's pretty much set in stone i guess it's a matter of making mistakes and how many mistakes you make and how many crucial mistakes you make before the gaffer has to say i'm looking to someone else so that's one of the hardest positions to um try and occupy for any goalkeeper so difficult being a backup goalkeeper having to wait for injury exactly 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 not ideal for confidence the best way for you to get confidence is for you to be on the field and for you to put in those solid performances and for you to be the keeper to keep the clean sheet get those all important victories under your belt for you and your country all right so i think you guys probably really want to actually let me know if you guys want to see those that nations CONCACAF nations league uh group announcements let me know if you guys want to dive into that because maybe you just want to stay focused on the reggae girls and if that's the case i'm more than happy to do that so let me know what you guys want me to work with go back over here and paste that and get that ready for you guys so let me know in the comments section if you guys want us to dive into if keeper is number one number two smiles that one's gone way over my head chili that one has gone completely over my head i have to break that one down for me um that one's gone way way over my head so yeah guys let me know in the comment section if you want me to go ahead and um go ahead and read out those announcement there the group stage announcement where the men's team is concerned for the CONCACAF nations league um see something you know what you're drawing out other people what about yourself what about yourself hmm Let's focus on you for a second. Why aren't you joining? And stop giving me this nonsense about what you look like and what you don't look like. I gave you an opportunity. I said, fair enough, you can come on if, if your face is an issue, which I don't think it is. You can come on and turn off your camera, but you're saying others don't want to join, but you don't want to join neither, so... I'm not going to um, focus on what other people want to do or what they don't want to do. Um, and you shouldn't neither because you ain't exactly trying to join the live stream. Um, seems like you guys aren't interested in, in the men's team tonight because there's been no responses there uh, in regards to giving you guys or maybe you already know where the group how the group stage is looking in terms of our opponents maybe you want to look at other groups and who they have which country are looking set to face off against each other women's you don't want to focus on the men's team okay we don't have to focus on the men's team um, that was just an option there for you guys i think we've pretty much touched on everything so far in regards to the, the men's team um all right you don't have to tell me twice i i can definitely work with that <laughs> actually said the conquer cup deal would be bad <laughs> oh gosh um yeah well we can't make excuses for ourselves can we definitely can't make excuses for ourselves the only thing we can do is go out there and play can't make no excuses for ourselves pointless complain it's not like they're going to give us lesser opponents definitely won't be getting lesser opponents you just have to go out there and go and play
but we have to read taking a break. <laughs> wow, guys. All right. I'm not let me close my tab. I don't want you guys to close off on my live stream. So we're not talking about them tonight. I know the, the men's team rub you guys up the wrong way. So I'm not going to um talk about them tonight. And maybe that's an indication that I should just focus on the women's team for this week. You guys don't seem interested in the men's team at all. Um they're unfortunate, ain't it? We have to move. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, a bit like what you're saying there, hot chili. Not surprised, but we have to move. Jasmine don't want to talk about them though, hot chili. So we have to hold the brakes there where the men's team is concerned. Like I said, I think I need to actually invest in a um in a proper streaming chair because my back is killing me. I'm gonna have to get myself a streaming chair at some point. <laughs> if you want to talk about pain you have to hit up massacre i can tell you all about pain in every language so um it is rough it is rough i think me and you're in the same boat here travis um they want to talk about my team so i think we're both in the same position here and uh, let me go through my notes. I think I've pretty much touched on everything. I'll be shocked if I haven't touched on everything, given that it's been almost two hours and 30 minutes. <laughs> Both club and country where the men's team is concerned, right? This is why when it's international football week where the men, where the women's team is concerned, most of us are feeling up, upright. We're feeling vibrant looking forward to the fixtures um, because they usually leave us in a good mood. I think we've touched on everything so far. There was some different, there was a, there was a separate um, conversation that I wanted to dive into, but I think I might have to hold my breaks and maybe dive into this one, possibly sometime during the week just waiting on an announcement. I think there's going to be an announcement, um, judging by the information that came across along with the squad announcement. I think there might be a, um, a new addition brought to the setup. Not where the, the, not where the players are concerned, saw a name earlier on next to the, the the player's announcement and it's not a player um it's to do with um the coaching staff so it'll be interesting to see if there's any announcement there if there's any new addition brought into the women's team You know what, Hot Chili, I'm not getting into it with you and those guys, you know, because I'm in no position to even poke front fun at them right now. And you know what, Travis is always good to me. So I'm going to I'm gonna leave that one between you and Travis, okay? I'm not going to, I'm trying to wind up no one tonight. These guys are usually good to me. Okay, guys, so press conference is coming up for the game against... Cayman Islands. Let me know in the comment section uh, what you guys want answers to, and these would obviously be separate to my questions. So let me know in the comment section what questions um, you guys want answers to. In well, it could be anything. I don't want to speak for you. It could be anything in regards to the player announcement, the squad announcement. We've already touched on Elika Keen, so you know the reason why she's unavailable. Like I said, I've been told that she missed Saturday's defeat at the hands of Tiffany, at the hands of Marlo Sweatman's team due to illness. So I don't necessarily need to ask Vin Blaine that. I guess an update could ask for an update in regards to Elika's sickness. Um, but let me know. I have no clue, um, Taja. This is it's a little bit frustrating because usually sometimes they'll tell you about the press conference because there is a six hour um difference, time difference between myself and you guys in Jamaica. I might hear about the press conference whilst I'm basically asleep. So when I wake up in the morning, I might come to realize that. 
there's a press conference taking place later on that day. A little bit of a tricky one when you have a nine to five. Um, but bearing in mind, if we go back and look at that game, like I said, that one is playing on Saturday. So I'm expecting the press conference to take place no later than, I would say between Thursday and Friday. If we could get it before then, that would be great, but you have to also take into consideration traveling. So whether it be traveling from Jamaica to the Cayman Islands and so on. Um, so game is on Saturday. So I would say between Thursday and Friday, again, if we can get that on Wednesday, that would be perfect, but no updates um, as to when our, our, um, our what do you call it press conference will take place so mr everton jackson you're gonna have to name names here mr jackson i assume um that i know the player that you're referring to and if that is the case um it's even more concerning but i'm sure she'll be able to shake it off I was hoping at the beginning of their campaign that last Friday I would have had a chance to see them in the World Cup draw, still trying to digest that. I know I felt so sick watching the World Cup draw. I felt a little bit upset if I'm being with you. Felt sad. Not even upset, just sad, just looking at it and just not seeing Jamaica's name. And then thinking to myself, right, who am I going to be supporting? Who do I want to see do good at the World Cup? Who do you guys want to see do well at the Men's World Cup? Who are you guys carrying? I have a feeling there's a few Brazil, potentially um, France supporters. Who are you guys carrying at the World Cup, at the Men's World Cup, that is? But Jasmine, hopefully, hopefully, when it comes to the women's team, hopefully we'll be sat looking at the World Cup draw, knowing that our country will be there and we won't have to go with an alternative country. Hot Chili saying, I didn't watch the World Cup draw too painful. I mean, it was painful. I definitely agree with you on that front, but I still watched it. Don't ask me why I watched it, but I watched it. Um, I guess it was to just, just to just be kept in the known. You want to be in the known, don't you? So that could be the reason why I watched it. It's not for no other reasons. Uh, which country? That's an odd way of spelling Jamaica. I've never seen Jamaica spelled like this, you know, um, Teja. This is a, this is unique. This is a this is an interesting one for me. I've never seen them spell Jamaica like this. Um, I'm not going to answer your question, but you can pretty much draw your own conclusion to that one mr scott fred to bring brazil another world cup title <sighs> the gloating the gloating has already begun where mr mckenzie and united are concerned mr jackson is going for brazil and frauds i like this i like this i even like france more so because of their black representation and also, also because Jamaica's two and only World Cup appearance, both the men's team and the men and the women's team, coincidentally, took place in France. So I have a bit of a soft spot for France. Jasmine is saying, I want to see Canada do well considering I live here. I understand that. Completely, completely understand that. Um, best of luck to Canada. Definitely interested in how Canada will do first year, first, first World Cup since 1986. Huge moment for them, isn't it? So definitely don't begrudge Canada, even though they sealed their faith against us last week on their home soil. Not begrudgeful of Canada. They earned their rights, earned their stripes to be at the Men's World Cup. So best of luck to them. Anyone supporting the African countries? Senegal? You guys back in Senegal and Ghana? Anybody back in Senegal and, and Ghana? Let me see. Let me know what you guys make of the African countries. I think 
it makes sense for us to support them as well. If we're talking about representation, that is, it makes, especially Ghana, with our history, our connection there, where Ghana is concerned, it makes sense for us to want Ghana to do well. Yes, Gavin, yes, Mr. Joseph, definitely. There's a few, few legends there with their last shot at the World Cup, isn't, isn't it, Jasmine? The one, um, what does it say? Love to see how you live in the country and don't, I think it's you. <laughs> Let me remove that comment. <laughs> Mr. Scott, Mr. Scott. I'm not getting into that conversation with you, sir. Never said I don't support them, you know, but I only belong to one country. I only belong to one country, was only born in one country. Um, and outside of that, I support countries that I think offer a near accurate or accurate representation of modern society. Um, so I think France. And obviously, when we look at African countries like your Senegal or your Ghana, there's accurate representation where they're concerned. Um, actually, you're saying Argentina. Is that Messi? I mean, surely if Argentina win uh, the World Cup, this will be Messi's last World Cup appearance, right? What a way to go out with a bang. That would be great for Argentina. Um yeah, someone, on, someone was watching my live stream from Argentina last week. I did wish them good luck with their goat, Messi. So good luck to them. Good luck to Argentina and all the other countries that you guys mentioned as well. Um, seems like only one of you supporting an African country. One of you saying that you're going with Ghana. Yeah, I'll be back in Ghana as well. Would love to see them have a good pop at this um, group stage. See how you guys want to talk about World Cup, but you don't want to talk about your men's team and the uh, Nations League. Let's see. Guys, I think we have covered everything there is to cover where... Um, where our women's team is concerned for the time being until further update comes my way. Um, so you guys have already heard, you guys have probably sat back and listened to the squad announcement. You've heard the squad announcement. <laughs> Bless him bless them yeah they won't be going to the world cup it's a shame isn't it but who am i to sit here and laugh france is real con is a real country black and white don't matter the skin color i love france government and the people that's in the country okay okay it's, it's i mean if we're talking about representation and what and what um <clears throat> France does with their national team. It's hard not to support them, isn't it? I need to have a think about this, Gavin. I'll be lying if I gave you a, a name right now. I'll be lying if I actually said this is the dark horse because I need to actually go back and look at the group stage carefully. Um, someone asked me to actually speak about the men's, the, the, the World Cup groups. Someone DM'd me on Instagram and asked me to speak about them. Um, so if that's something you guys want me to do, I could um, go off and do my homework and then do a live stream for you guys. Let's see, let's see. Um, so at the moment, Gavin, I'm so sorry. If I gave you a name, I'll be absolutely lying if I said I knew who the, or I have someone down as my dark horse. I don't know who the dark horse is right now, if I'm being honest with you. That's something that I need to go off and look into myself. See if we can um, bring up that World Cup. Why is it bringing me World Cup qualifiers? World Cup draw? 
Uh, hmm. Why is it not bringing me the the table? The table is what I'm looking for. Okay. No, there's going to be some cracking games, I can tell you that. Wow, okay. So you guys already know about the group stage, but since I'm looking at it, might as well go for it with you guys instead of sitting here and being selfish. Okay, that's my choice. You're going for Spain or Holland? Oh, since we're talking about Holland, Mr. LVG, Louis Van Gaal, a speedy recovery to LVG. I'm sure you guys um, are aware of the upsetting news there about Louis Van Gaal. See if we can actually get something up. Oh, that's quite sad. Um, thank you for reminding me, by the way. It's really, really sad. I'm probably going to ruin you guys' night um, if you don't already know the news about around Louis Van Gaal. Um, so let's go up. I see a tweet here from Barcelona. So let's go across and read this tweet with you guys. And sorry if I end up putting a damper on your night, but it's only right for us to speak about the man himself whilst we're on the topic of the Netherlands. So here you go, guys. A bit of an unfortunate news broke. I believe it was yesterday. Um, and as you can see there on screen, our thoughts and prayers go to the former Barcelona manager, Louis van Gaal, who has been di diagnosed with prostate cancer. Stay strong, Louis, and get well soon. So that is heartbreaking news for Louis van Gaal. And I pray to God that he is on the road to a steady and successful recovery. Um, so thank you, Gavin, for bringing up Holland. Um, yeah, that's that's really, really sad and heartbreaking news to hear. Just like Travis said, yeah, I saw the news really sad. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely sad. I think we should all keep it in, keep Louis um, LVG in our uh, prayers, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. It's just cancer, isn't it? It's just, yeah, it's it's horrible. But share the same message as you guys hope and pray that he can pull through and has, have the last laugh. Mr. Mills, good evening to yourself, Mr. Mills. Thank you for tuning in. If you are just tuning in, you've missed quite a lot. I've been sat here for about three hours straight. Um, we've gone through so much. We've gone through... Well, touched on the return of Marlo Sweatman and Paige Bailey Gill. They are back in the squad. Um, so that's some welcome news there for you, Mr. Mills, um, where our team is concerned. I've also read out the squad announcement a number of times, but since you're just tuning in, if you want me to read out the squad announcement so that you are in the loop, then do let me know and I'll go ahead and do exactly that. Yeah, Brazil, Brazil are on an unbeaten run at the moment, aren't they? Right? Brazil must be. I'm sure I read somewhere that Brazil are on a unbeaten run. Um, Brazil, I mean, if you're Arsenal, it's Martinelli. I see Travis as well. Travis talking about Fred when he should be speaking about Martinelli, Gabriel Martinelli. You want me to go ahead and read that again? I definitely can go ahead and read that again for you. Um, before I do that, I know we were talking about the... World Cup qualifiers where the men's team are concerned. Um, my apologies, not the qualifiers, the squad announcement, not the squad amount. So what am I on about? The the draw, the World Cup draw. So let's go ahead and um go over here and look at the team, the groups. You guys should be able to see that. If you can't see it, then give me a shout in the comment section and I will go ahead and rectify the matter for you. So you can see here the groups, group A. The host, Qatar, Ecuador, Senegal, and the Netherlands. Um, that's Group A. Move on to Group B, and you can see Tage's favorite country outside of Jamaica, England, there. 
um, <laughs> you can see this, this, this is a controversial group, isn't it? I probably just have to skip past this one and not go into too much, too much a conversation with group B. So let me move on swiftly to group C, where we have Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Poland. That is group C. Group D, we have France, Denmark, and Tunisia. Group E, we have Spain, Germany, and Japan. What a group. What a group. Group F, we have Belgium, Canada, Morocco, and Croatia. There are a few um, to, be to be decided games as well there. So you're probably wondering why, does a, why do a few groups have three teams and some only have four? There's like a few... In, I think England group, England group's definitely incompleted. I think Scotland, Ukraine, or Wales, depending on the winner of that match, uh, joins their group. And there's a few other um, to be decided as well. So group G, you have Brazil, Ser um, Serbia, Switzerland, and Cameroon. And group H is Portugal. Ghana, Uruguay, and Korea Republic. I know we are all we've all got our eyes on this fixture right here, right? The revenge fixture. Ghana, the Black Stars versus Uruguay. You guys don't need me to go into too much a too much of a conversation as to why this is the revenge fixture. Suarez, Ghana are asking you to come outside. And come outside, you have no choice but to come outside unless you have a injury. I'm hoping that Ghana can taste sweet revenge against Uruguay um, because they deserve to. Fred, Fred is Pastor Fred. I forgot that it's Pastor Fred, you know, Travis. My, my apologies. Sorry. Sorry. Hope, okay, Mr. Joseph. It's not rocket science or you support at club level, is it? Definitely not rocket science or you support. Mr. Blair is saying, yes, please. I can only assume that you are referring to the squad announcement where the Rugger Girls is concerned. I'm going to give you that squad announcement again for some strange reason of going to stumble their way to the final. Well, Mr. McKenzie, I hope that it's just something strange and nothing more to it. Don't want to see Portugal in the final. Um, even if they do go, I would love to see them um lose. Do you like to see them lose at the hands of Messi? Why not? Does it, does anyone in the comment section actually think that um the current kings of the world with their title France? Anyone think that they can hold on to it? Anyone think they will hold on to it? Let me know in the comments section. Look at these guys trying to stop World Cup curse. Look at these dudes giving France an, an easy group. <laughs> Let me go back and look at France's group. Is it an easy group for France? Let's go back and look at France's group. So it's group E, group, oh, France have um a to be, to be decided, just like group E where Spain, Germany, and Japan are concerned. And group B. So it's about three more groups that have a to, to be decided game. Okay, so France have Denmark and Tunisia. Well, Mr. Chile, you have been watching football since um football and World Cup since you was in a diaper. I'm pretty sure you know that strange things happen at World Cup. So might look like an easy group, but if France are complacent, Bet your last dollar or your last pound that anyone can clip, any any team can have their wings clip if they go into these games complacent. Nothing is given. Just because you are England or France or you're Germany or you're Spain or you're Brazil, that doesn't mean that you're going to walk away with three points. You have to do the job on the on um match day. Hate Suarez. Come on, Ghana. I'm not going to argue with that. Not going to argue with that. Reggae girls will win the next World Cup. Mr. Mills, we might need to stick this one on the wall. I like this. I like the way you're thinking. So with that being said, I think we're going to have to take a little pause where the men's football is concerned and go back over to the reggae girls. Because with this comment, what this is telling me is Mr. Mills is saying, don't worry about the Cayman Islands. Don't worry about Dominican Republic. Sign, seal and delivered. With that statement there from Mr. Malik Mills. Okay, so three of you have been saying that you want to hear the squad announcement again. Sorry to those of you 
who have sat through this live stream with me for almost three hours. I would have said this at least 20 times already. But I'm going to say it 21 times more. I do apologize. All right. So let's go through the squad sheet again. We have Paige Bailey Gale and Marlo Sweatman. They make their return to the women's senior national team. Mariah Gray or Mariah Gray, Yasmin Jameson, Sashana Campbell, Khadija Shaw, Trudy Carter, Sydney Schneider, Tierney Wiltshire, um, Tiki Van Zanten, Tiffany Cameron, Chinalu Asha, Shade Odomolokun, Alison Swaby, Sh Chantel Swaby, Vian Sampson, scroll that down, it's a little bit too quick, Kayla McCoy, Rebecca Spencer, Jody Brown, and Michaela Days. And that is your squad announcement. I don't know if I went through that one a little bit too quick for you. Maybe I did. Um, so let me go through that one once more. Felt like I went through that one a little bit too quick for you guys. So let me give you guys another read. So that is Paige Bailey Gale, Marlo Sweatman, Mariah Gray, Yasmin Jameson, Tashana Campbell, Khadija Shah, Trudy Carter. Sydney Schneider, Tierney Wiltshire, Kiki Van Zanten, Tiffany Cameron, Chinalu Asha, Shade Adamolakun, Alison Swaby, Chantal Swaby, that's the Swaby sisters, Vian Sampson, Kayla McCoy, Rebecca Spencer, Jody Brown, Malika, oh, I'm sorry, Michaela Days. So that is how the squad is looking there, guys. Um, for those of you who are just tuning in and wanting to know about the squad announcement um see what you guys are saying in the comments section yes we can win the world cup if the coach calls the best players <laughs> Tej, i love the way you make it sound so simple walk in the park hope it happens again for a good laugh <laughs> Spain won the World Cup, then dropped out of the group. I'm telling you, Travis, it's nothing is given. Atrocious, atrocious there from Spain. So nothing is given. They had a host of problem there, Spain. Remember what happened at the um last World Cup? Host of problems. Yes, I am high. So if we fall short, we'll have to make it to the semis or quarters. <laughs> Ah, oh, no Lauren James. Um, I, I think that's the play that you're asking for. Um, still no James. I'm assuming you're referring to Chelsea's Lauren James. No, no Lauren James. And we also know that Alika Keane is out as well due to illness. Hopefully she's on a path of a steady recovery. I've seen one of you um said that uh, you've heard that it is due to uh COVID. Um, if you, if you have touched on that in the comment section Teja says i'm confident you should be confident when the regular girls are in town should be very confident um looking forward to this week's game that's for sure <laughs> mr mills safe to say mr mills is not team jff aim high but if we hope we don't but hope we don't fall too short hard if we do Yes, yes, most certainly. <laughs> she got called up. Did she accept the call up or did you wake up just as you, um, just as the dream got interesting? Whilst I'm here, guys, um, I need you guys to, I don't know, some of you, I'm guessing some of you are book readers. I need you guys to tell me some names of black authors trying to, um, purchase some more books um think of wouldn't mind if i could get my hands on books like these um so this one here you guys must be familiar with this one maya angelo i know why the cage bird sings books like these guys um one here that you guys are probably seen this one before emancipated from mental slavery selected sayings of i know you guys know who this book is all about it's the legend the hero the national hero mr garvey himself searching for books by black authors um, with a heavy emphasis on empowerment around black women so guys if you can think of any black authors drop their names in the comment section for me um 
I'm looking to um buy some books. <laughs> About a very good defender. Her name is oh, I've never heard you mention Siobhan's name before there, Scott. This is our first time. <laughs> Okay, um, so you want me to tell him or do you want me to ask him about Siobhan? So, because that's that's two completely different tasks that you're asking me there, uh, Mr. Scott. So, you're saying you want me to ask about Siobhan. All right, since you're always supporting my page. Actually, my apologies because you did ask me this before and it, I'm not going to lie to you. It slipped my mind to ask about Siobhan, so I do apologize. Okay, so um yeah i can ask about siobhan for you anything else that goes for all the guys in the comment section let me know <laughs> okay i will ask i definitely will ask right let me um And for those of you who are just tuning in, some um, good news there in the English Football League where uh, Jade Bailey is concerned. I'm going to take myself off screen and see if I can bring on Jade Bailey and you guys can watch her celebrating victory, winning the championship with Liverpool with two games to spare. So they have now won promotion to the top division in the English Football League league for the women's team of course Let's see, um, let's go back over here. You guys are asking for. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. You guys are giving me some good names. I'm familiar with with David. All right, let me see. Uh, let's write down these names, actually. What am I doing? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's see. All right, let's write down a few of these names because... I need to stack up on some black authors. So, exact um, like I said, huge emphasis on black or black authors with a huge emphasis on um, black female empowerment. So you're saying he does a lot on black history. Yeah, I've come across his work before. Um. Where is Jasmine? I'm sure Jasmine said something. Okay. One moment, guys. I'm just writing down these names. E C H E. All right. Okay. Thank you, guys. Ask him about James too. We need my Chelsea players on the team. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore certain part of that comment there, Mr. Mills. Okay, so you want to know about Lauren James. So you want to know about Lauren James, Mr. Hibbert, Mr. Ian Hibbert, sir. Where have you been? Where have you been? Good evening to yourself. Hope you're okay. Um, is Jade's situation? I assume that it is the same, um, considering both players uh, had documentation concerns at the last qualifying windows. I definitely posed the question around Drew Spence, so I'll backtrack and include 
Jade Bailey in for that. And so Drew and Jade. Um, correction done, Jasmine. Thank you. See that Tejo isn't going to stop until he has his favorite players in the squad. All right. Um, HY Hilton, as well as the right back player to prove. Okay. You know what? I do need a new mat. I was going to actually um, buy myself a new mat, but Mills, Mr. Mills, since you're so kind, I'm going to gladly accept your offer. So please send it anytime you're ready, send it. Just let me know when you're ready and I'll give you my address. Feel free to put a player's name on the back as well, if you wish. Um. <laughs> oh, God. Um, thank you guys there for your suggestion where the black authors are concerned. Um, whoa, is that the time? It's almost quarter to three in the morning, guys. Wow, Um, been streaming with you guys for three hours and I think we've covered all grounds for the time being uh, where some players are concerned. In case you're wondering, after all of that, losing 2-0 against Marlo Sweatman's team, Wondering, are uh, Tiffany Cameron and Marlo Sweatman still friends? They're still best of friends? Well, here's your answer. Nice to see the both of them. That looks like that was at the airport there. Tiffany Cameron and Marlo Sweatman all masked up and still friends after that 2 nil defeat. At the hands of Marley Sweatman's side, Victoria beating Eto FC 2 0 over the weekend. Nice to see Tiffany Cameron and Marley Sweatman are still friends, still roommates. So that's good to see. <laughs> Mr. Mills, Mr. Mills, I wouldn't say that was a lucky win. I'd Definitely wouldn't have that down as a lucky win, but I'm not getting involved with you and Hot Chili. Let me stay out of this one. So, yeah, guys, before I go, let me know in the comments section um, what question you guys want. What do you guys want me to ask Vin Blaine? Let me know your questions down in the comments section. Read through what I've got so far. So, some of you have said Siobhan, Lauren James um hilton as well you guys have said hilton um you've also said drew spence and jade bailey drew and jade so that's looking tasty really want to know when this press conference is going to take place um, uh, do, 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 do. all right Okay. Um, you are late. Like, the show definitely almost finished definitely almost finished like i said i think i've pretty much covered all grounds for you guys um Um... 
Um, Mr. Scott, I'm not ignoring you. I'm actually trying to find that date for you, but I can't see the date on screen. Last date that I can see where the Hungarian women's semifinal is concerned for Tiffany's team. So that would have been Eto FC. That was on the 30th of March and they won that one 2 1. What a sweet victory there where Tiffany is concerned. And then April the 2nd, so just over the weekend, they played against smaller Sweatman's team, and unfortunately, they lost that one to nil. So the final, I'm looking for the date for the final, and I can't see it. Can't see the date for the final. Um, let me turn on my shade screen. Maybe two eyes are better than one on this occasion. Maybe you guys can see a date for the Hungarian Women's Cup final um semifinals was here we're looking at tiffany cameron's team she'd be playing in the final against marlo sweatman's team can't actually see this one right here as you can see this one is a league fixture um i can't see a date i can't actually see a date there teja so sorry Unless it's right in front of me and I can't actually see it, um, but I don't think it is. Uh, might have to use another site to search for that one, but no, I can't actually see it. Same to you, same to you, Jasmine. Have a lovely evening. Enjoy the rest of your evening, I should say, and have a pleasant Tuesday when it arrives. Will is your prediction for the next round? Who's that one for? Mr. Mills, who are you asking to give you a prediction? What is your prediction for the next round? Is that for me or is that for everyone in the comment section? I'm predicting two wins. That's what I'm predicting, um, where the women's team is concerned. I'm going to try and see if I can get something else for you, Teja. Let's see. Um, let's see. I've been searching for that date myself. That's the issue when you're following teams from the leagues who aren't easily um, accessible. Sometimes it can be a tedious task finding something as simple as a fixture. Um, it isn't always easy. Uh, why is it not showing the, it's weird. Why is it not showing the, um, have they not been given a fixture yet? Have they not been given a date, I should say? They've not announced the date yet. Mm-mm-mm. Can't see the date for that one, Teja. Definitely can't see the date for that one. I've checked on other teams. Yeah, I can't see the date for that one. Yeah, give a give Tiff a ask. I've checked two websites for you. Um, and I can't see a date penciled in for either Eto FC or Victoria FC. Um, so I don't know why the date isn't available. But there's nothing there at present. This is weird because they've shown they they're showing the semi-final, but they're not showing the final dates. I'm guessing that's even if it should be, um, even if it's a matter of to be confirmed, you usually see that um, that they at least have a date in mind with the to be confirmed next to them next to the um, fixture date, right? But even with that, I can't see a. A date um so sorry about that okay. 
One second, guys. I'm gonna I was gonna try and stretch for my charger. It's not a good idea. Let me get my charger real quick before I sign off. What do I have? I'll probably give you guys another 20 minutes. Yeah, I'll give you guys another 20 minutes. Um for the 12th. Um, okay, so you want to know my, um, you want to know my, you want to know my score prediction for the blockbuster? No idea what that scoreline is going to be. Like I said, all I want is a win. Would love to see us give tap into double figures over Cayman Islands, though. So I would love a 10 nil over Cayman Islands, but maybe I'm being unrealistic. That's not to question the players' capabilities or abilities, but no team wants to be embarrassed at this stage of the qualifiers. Um, no idea. Maybe you could come back. We can revert back to this question maybe after, after um, this weekend fixtures for Jamaica and for Dominican Republic as well. So maybe after we've played, so played against our respective opponents, maybe then I could give you guys a response or I could give you a response. Um, but at the moment, I can't give you a prediction. 20 new, you've got to be having a laugh. I can't see that. Have some respect for Cayman Islands. Mr. Mills, have a bit of respect for them. I mean, 20 nil. I don't think that's going to happen. But what do I what what do I know? I don't think that's going to happen as much as I love my country 20 nil. Um <laughs> don't think it's going to be 20 nil. This is worse than what Travis said. Travis said 14 nil the last time round in our um, recent <laughs> qualifiers. You guys have no respect. It is hilarious. Um, you guys don't respect your opponents. Okay. Um... Yeah, but what do you know about Caymans? I need to actually go and do my research about Caymans as well. I'm going to be giving you guys a, what do you call it? A preview. So I'm going to next, depending on when this um, press conference comes out, I guess I'm going to have to wait until the press conference before I can give you guys a, <laughs> before I can give you guys a, um, <laughs> a preview of that Cayman's game, Cayman Islands game. So, um, yeah, there's a few things to discuss further along during the week, the preview being one of them, preview the game. Um, also, so we're going to be previewing the game, the press conference as well. We'll be talking about the press conference. And then most importantly, we're going to be doing a watch along, a live watch along with you guys same so many countries would say about so small and when we play them most of the time we destroy them <laughs> it's the same thing that a lot of countries would say about us for real that we're a, it's a small country which other country different from the you like seeing play not one mr graham i only honest to god i'm only concerned about our team i don't focus on no other team um the last world cup just like a lot of people, the team to keep the, keep an eye on was USA, wasn't it? USA are the, the bosses when it comes to the, the World Cup, the big stages. So USA, I kept a firm eye on, on the USA at the last World Cup. That I can't deny. Definitely kept a close eye on, on USA. 
Malik, <laughs> Malik said 20 nil. I cannot believe this. Um, <laughs> don't watch the size of the country, watch the talent that the country has. You hear that, Malik? You hear that, Mr. Mills? Watch the talent, don't watch the size of the country. Um, so I can't actually chime in on that because I have no idea. Um, Oh, that one's going to pan out. I need to do a couple of updates, my end before I actually close off on my live stream. So let me just do that whilst I'm here before I forget. Okay, let's... Um... So far, you guys haven't actually given me a lot of questions to ask Vin Blaine. Um, so I'll just have to take the lead from my end um, and ask my questions. Um, you guys have only given me maybe two questions. I think both of them came from Teja. Teja gave me two questions for Mr. Vin Blaine. So I'll be asking him in the press conference for you guys. See what the girls will definitely go through confidence stuff here from travis travis says the girls will definitely go through i'm not going to argue with that every game is a different test <laughs> no make him have to say it again in a jasmine man said 20 nil jeez um please 20 nil Imagine if he's actually right. So let me not say too much. But like Jasmine said, they're not they are playing with a goalkeeper. They're not coming into this match without a goalkeeper. So <laughs> um interesting. Yeah, I don't know much about Cayman Islands, but I don't think they're going to be a walk in the park. It's gonna be a good game, nevertheless. I mean, people had high expectations for our game against Grenada. You only have to ask Travis. Travis said 14 nil, if I'm not mistaken. It wasn't uh, close to being 14 nil. So, and at these these Concacaf nations as well, where their women's team is concerned, they've improved on like over over um recent years they're not the same team of yesteryear so um with that being said mr mills don't go into that game expecting your 20 nil because i don't want you to come on here and start losing your call because the girls didn't live up to your expectations <laughs> Actually, talk about Chelsea and Brentford is fourteen nil, and the Gona squad lose. I can't. What did it? What does that last bit say? I don't understand. It's. I can read the first bit. Actually, I can read that bit. Chelsea and Brentford is four. I, I can't read the last bit though. I don't know. Maybe I need glasses. I can't. Can't read that last part. Um, one in the tournament already got 19 nil which country is that who got 19 nil so i'm not saying that it can't be done but what i'm saying is we've got to put some respect on the other nations as well and then my thing you just coming back over here um after that game against cayman islands bloating because Jamaica beat them 20 nil. <laughs> oh God, hey guys. Stuff are kicking off on Twitter where the um the Grammys is concerned, isn't it? I'm seeing stuff pop up on my phone about the Grammys. I don't even want to touch on that. Malik seems like he's um writing in a foreign language. I don't know what he's saying. I can't I can't read what you're saying, um, Malik. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm tired. 
or I don't know, this looks like a foreign language to me. Nice to see that you can speak and write in another language or that yeah, nice to see that you can write in another language aside from English. I'm proud of you. Trust me, that team that lost 19, it is, is this St. Vincent, Travis? Feel like you're talking about St. Vincent. Feel like you're talking about St. Vincent. So clarify that one for me, please. Travis. Should have actually set this up before I started my live stream. Now I have to do this before I sign off. Right, let's save that. 19. Oh, the hell beat them 19. Let me go and see what's going on over here. 19 nil. Jesus. Who beat them 19 0? Oh, God. Hmm. Yeah, that was in the 23rd, 23rd of February. That is wow. So they must be rock bottom of their group. Where are they? They're not. Virgin Island, US Virgin Islands, so how much are bad are they performing in, in, in their group if they're not even bottom? US Virgin Islands, 6 nil. Guatemala beat them 9 nil. Wow. Lively in the upper groups, but that sounds like it's a their problem. 19 nil, that is quite... Wow, I mean... Wow. Hmm. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. You know, sir, so chilling now. I'm not, you're now not about your chili. I'm not chilly. I'm not going there with you. <laughs> I'm not going there with you on that team. I don't know nothing about those guys, so I can't, can't comment on their team. I can't read it, Teja. I told you before, I can't read it. So whatever he's saying doesn't even make sense to me. It's not making sense to me, Malik. You're not speaking English. So I'm going to have to wheel and come again because I can't understand what you're saying. Right, what time is it? Right, I'm going to take this one up to half past three. And then I'm going to go to my bed and I'm going to be coming back later on. to do some more um not later on what am i on about actually maybe i will be back later on depending on when the um what do you call it a press conference is um wrapped up no idea let me actually check my messages i don't know when the press conference will be held but let me go and see yeah no update don't don't know when that press conference will be updated will be, um, sorry, presented. It is getting better. That's why I can't brush aside no team, especially the ones in our group. Um, rest you. <laughs> I think I've managed to um, recover over the last couple of days, Teja. So I'm good where that's concerned. <sighs> Jasmine, Jasmine said it earlier on. Jasmine said, and you know, the oh, paraphrase, the only way you can lose 20 nil is if you don't have a goalkeeper. So maybe then just, that is terrible though. That is terrible. Um. I just want to understand, were there any red cards in that game? I don't think there was any red cards. Hold on, let me go back. Was there any red cards? No red cards. Oh, my. 
wow you had one player score how much one two three four five six goals I need you guys to actually have a look at what I'm looking at because this is what you call having no mercy on your opponents. I mean, this is this is something else. They must have a young squad, right? They must have a young squad. Let's see what this lineup look like. They must have a young squad, young, inexperienced. How old is their goalkeeper? Don't even have no information on their goalkeeper. Let's go down and see. So how old is their um, players? A lot of their players, as expected with women's football, there's limited information out there. So is this a young squad? 28, 28 year in your prime years. So that's she's she isn't young. Not in football years, anyways. They don't really, there's not really much information there on their squad. Let's pick one of these players who scored the five goals again. Let's just pick one of their um, goal scorers. Wow, so she's 22. Let's see. See, there's a difference there straight away, guys. Two players have clicked on so far. They at least have their Wikipedia profile. So that should give you an insight, a better understanding in terms of just how far apart these two countries are. See, there you go again. Looks like every every player in this team have their Wikipedia profile. Um, so they should be played at a respected level because it looks as if they all belong to a club. Um, yeah. So there's a clear, clear difference there. Huge difference. So that should add some context there for you guys. Um, that's him. Yeah, I feel for them. Definitely feel for them. Yes, they did. England, I can't remember the side that England beat 20 nil. I felt sorry for that side as well. England, yeah, England had no mercy. I can't remember who did England beat 20 nil. Let's remind ourselves who England beat 20 nil. Um, oh, yeah, Latvi Lat Latvia. Now, this was just absolutely no mercy here from England. And see if you can bring that up on screen so you guys can see that one as well. England, names that we're all familiar with Beth Mead, Ellen White, Lauren M., Georgia Stanway. These are all Jill Scott. We are familiar with these, these names. Jordan Nobbs, couple of legends of the game. 20 nil. I mean, come on. I'm, it's not it's hardly a surprising scoreline given how West, well established this England women's team is. Um, their capabilities and their abilities. Not surprising at all. But I will say it was for a World Cup <laughs> qualifiers. That was for one of their women's World Cup UEFA qualifiers. No mercy at all where England is concerned. Which which group is this England team in? Why am I looking at? Which group are they in? Um Let's see. You know, the first time I saw that one, I thought that was for a friendly. Didn't even realize that that was a They're in group E, group stage group, sorry, group D. I thought this one was for a friendly. Jeez, wow. Yeah, that is embarrassing, isn't it? Group D. Earlier on, I saw Jamaica, and I wasn't sure why I was seeing Jamaica, so I had to go back a step. So, see, England are clearly out in front, 18 points. Look at that goal difference, guys, 53. Yeah, Latvia, that 20 nil done England, a great amount of gold, 53. Really have no competition in their um, group, so they're good. 
Um, okay, let's take that off live. Take that off screen. Yeah, um, Cayman Islands. So you want to see how many of them are there? We keep. Um, okay, let's see. Bear with me. Let's see how many of them have Wikipedia. Who am I thinking of? Um, Cayman Islands. Cayman Islands women's football team. I know that you're just wanting to go with your agenda. Okay, let's we'll see if we can look at their last game against Bermuda. How many of their players have Wikipedia? From the starting 11, this is from their game against um, Bermuda, right? So let's bring on that shared screen once more. See that I still have Tiffany Cameron and Marlo Sweatman as my background. So let me just change that quickly. There we go. Let's say, okay, let's look at Cayman Islands. Um, starting goal with their goalkeeper. Goalkeeper got her Wikipedia page. Um, okay, let's scroll down. Another one. So that's two if you guys are counting. Three. Three players out of the starting 11 so far. One, two, three. This one has Deandra Kelly. She has a Wikipedia, but hmm, I'm going to say no that she doesn't because that doesn't actually lead to nothing. So, so far of the starting 11, we can say that there is one, two, three. Three so far. Um, still three. These ones don't lead to nothing. They um they're there. Claim no, we're not clicking on that. So it's still three so far for Cayman Island. Someone asks, let's look at um four. How many of the players have a Wikipedia page? That's four out of the last um so far from their start at eleven. Still four because this one isn't leading to anything. It's just there. You can kind of see um it's basic information there but there's nothing there to click on um hold on no there's still nothing there to click on so where are we close off on that and go back down i think so far we've counted four right guys from the starting 11 um and okay so that's four out of their start 11 against um bermuda that was that the six nil defeat against bermuda there not gonna bother touching on their subs that should give you guys a rough understanding Mr. Ruddy Francis, sir, you have done the absolute right thing. Thank you very much. I hope you have a lovely week and a blessed weekend when it comes. I thought it was a friendly at first, Hot Chili. I swear I thought it was a friendly. They had me fooled with that um, squad. <laughs> I knew you was just searching for something to add to your agenda. Um... Travis McKenzie, please do share the link there. I'm gonna need that actually. Um, where did you have you sent it to me? Have you sent it to my um maybe you've sent it to my DMs? I don't know. Where have you sent it? I wanna see the I wanna see the um I wanna know more about this this team. Definitely want to know more about this team. Good to see um Kayla McCoy there on home soil. Uh, she's doing well. Done an interview with TVJ. Can see Paige Bailey Gale as well. She's there also. So they've touched down in Jamaica safely. <laughs> 
So that's good. It is their previous squad in the chat. Where is it? I can't see no link. No, um, YouTube's a little bit funny at times. They don't like us sharing link. Um, I can't see the link, Travis. I think that's probably just down to YouTube, just not wanting us to, just not allowing us to share links. I know links to games, they don't allow us to share that. To streaming, I should say, they don't allow us to share those types of links. Um, so yeah, like I said, guys, it's 317 here in the UK. So I'm going to take this one up to half past three here in the morning. Okay. Thank you. I've just I've just clicked on it. Thank you. Yeah, Travis, if you see the, um, if you actually click on their um, pages, you can see that the ones that are in red, actually, let's see if I can, um, can I send this to myself so that I can put it on screen for you guys? How am I going to do this? Okay, I'm going to send me, I'm going to send an email to myself and then I'm going to open the email so that you guys can see what I am um, looking at okay this is um be the nuisance okay all right so we can go ahead and look back at that cayman islands team um, thanks for that, Travis. But um, when I clicked on that link, majority of their squad in terms of their in terms of okay, so let's go back over and do a shared screen. Um, okay, let's go over here. Cayman Islands women's national football team so if we scroll down and guys can see that they have two games coming up they have grenada and jamaica it's what i was talking about when we went through that squad list that starting 11 for their last game where cayman islands is concerned if you look at their team pretty really and truly the only ones that have their um page available is the ones in blue so ebanks in blue in blue all these other teams all these other names when you click on them there isn't really much there um i really wouldn't call this a wikipedia page because yeah there's nothing there which could be a reason that could probably explain why it's in red maybe someone needs to actually go ahead and create wikipedia pages for them because there isn't really there isn't nothing there different to when you click on ebanks page you get something comes up you can see that she's been in their pipeline since 2010 for the u17 subsequently moving on to the senior team she is 27, so she's in a prime age of her career. Um, but yeah, you don't really know much about this team. If you're going to be doing your research, this is going to be a tough one, isn't it? Um, so yeah, that's what their squad look like. They've got a pretty young squad, don't they? They've got... Here they go. Um... Who's the oldest in this squad? So the oldest would be a 27-year-old Ebanks. That's their oldest player. If this page is anything to go with. I might have to dive into that once more for you guys. Um, oh, dear. So that is an inex... That would be an inexperienced squad then, wouldn't it? This is making... 
Mr. Mills, he's probably grinning from ear to ear. I need to check what he's saying in the comments section because if this and if, if this is anything to go by, then I'm not saying that twenty nil is likely, but that is a inexperienced squad. I know we have a young squad as well. Oh wow! Their goalkeeper is so much. Uh, Sophie Roberts. Don't know how old Sophie Roberts is. Youngest goalkeeper is 18 years old. Oh, I mean, age, I don't really know how good she is, but can't really judge the players based off their age because at 16 years old, Jodie Brown was knocking down everything that was placed in her way. So, yeah, need to dive into that team for sure. Yes, I would. I would go there. Um, I would, if we qualify, then yeah, that would be something I would look to um, do. I did go to France for the women's team, so I would, yeah, I would try my best to go there. Whether I end up there, that's a completely different story, but that would be on the agenda. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. I've seen it. The guys in the comments section have indicated that they don't want to talk about the men's national team, so I go by their rules. So I can't talk about them, unfortunately, Mr. Mills. Maybe on another live stream, um, but as things stand, I can't talk about them. Sorry. It's red because they don't have a page. Yeah, exactly. They don't. They don't have a page. Makes information gathering twice as difficult. Actually, now this this I do believe ten nil. This I do believe. Mr. Mills is saying twenty nil. Ten nil. I think ten nil is more a likely, a more feasible scoreline. I can see ten nil. Twenty nil. I think that would shock everyone. Um. How many more minutes do I have with you guys? Whoa, I got seven minutes. Got seven minutes, guys, and then I'm going to have to close off for this live stream um, for you all. Thinking of something, but I can't actually gather my thoughts. That's an indication that I need to close off and go to my bed. Uh, my prediction is, okay, 10 nil. we need to start. We need to start show our class now. No more excuses. This player is not here or they come. Jamaica class is permanent. Can't disagree with that. Can we, coach? <laughs> I'm not going to speak about the, the men's team because I know that that upsets some of you. So I'm not going to um, speak about the men's team. Okay, um, about to close off on the show, guys. I've got about five more minutes in you guys. I didn't expect to stay this long, um, but then again, I have been away for a couple of days, so I figured I might as well stay as long as possible. Um, so just a reminder, let me close some of my stream, some of my tab is becoming a little bit confusing for me. Um, So let's give ourselves a gentle reminder as to what we are up against. Okay, let me bring back up that tab because that's just closed off on me. Close that and then, oh, what is going on? Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and um, bring up this fixture list so that we can have a look at the next two games um, around the corner for us where our World Cup qualifiers is concerned. And um, but Jamaica women is like a work of art. They are. They definitely are a work of. And are you feeling better? I am feeling better. I definitely feeling better compared to a couple of days ago. Um. Okay. Right. So, let's bring this one to an end and let's remind us of what we're up against. Last two games in our CONCACAF Women's 
qualifiers. All starts on, bear in mind, guys, I'm reading the time and the date for those of us who are based in the UK. So this one starts on 1 a.m. on Sunday. So I'm six hours ahead of you if you are based in Jamaica. And it will be Cayman Islands who host Jamaica for their third match. As you can see, the table doesn't lie. We are sitting in second place, six points apiece, joint at the top against Dominican Republic. They are leading the table as things stands, and they do have the better goal difference. They have 13, we have nine. We have nine. We'll be facing off against the fourth place team in the table, Cayman Island. So this one kicks off at 1 a.m. If you are based in the UK, that will be the 10th of April at 1 a.m. We're going to close things off with the blockbuster, the big game, biggest game in this um table and probably probably the biggest game in the Concord Cup women's championship qualifiers all comes to an end in the first round that is against dominican republic on home soil 12 a.m on wednesday the 13th of april again these are the times and dates if you are based in the uk like myself so Top of the table clash against Dominican Republic and Jamaica. Dominican Republic, in case you guys are wondering how things are looking for them, they actually play on Saturday, the 9th of April, 12 a.m. So that will be on a Friday for you guys. And they'll be squaring off against Bermuda. And subsequently, you already know how this one ends for them in the group where they'll be coming to the office play their final game against Jamaica. So that would be match day four. So that's how things look in terms of the fixtures that we should fix our eyes on. Cayman Islands, starting off with the Cayman Islands and closing off against Dominican Republic. All the best. The women team have to save you from the Brentford. What is hot? Chili saying, you guys are speaking a different language tonight. No, no, I've been away for a couple of days. I come back, everybody, have, you guys have learned a new language. You're speaking words that I don't understand. I think I need to go and learn another language myself because I can read the first part. The women's team have to save you from that. Which match? I mean, which match are you referring to here, Hot Chili? don't know who you're referring to. I don't know who you're throwing shade at. Um, maybe it's Mr. Mills. I don't know. I can't read the last bit of that comment, though. Don't forget about the people based in US and Canada. That is why I said do the math, Mr. Mills. I'm definitely not forgetting about my friends across the pond, be it in the United States or Canada. But I do say... Um, six hours ahead of Jamaica simply because we're talking about the reggae girls and a lot of the supporters are actually based in Jamaica so I usually target it at Jamaica because it is about the women's national team so it makes sense to use Jamaica as a starting point and that's why I always say I am six hours ahead of Jamaica so you guys can do the math <laughs> All right, guys, let's see. We're going to bring this one to an end. It's bang on 3.30 here in the UK. Um, I'm not actually um, tired, surprisingly, but I think we've discussed as much as we can going up to almost four hours. Is there really anything else to talk about? There's nothing else left to talk about, if I'm being honest. Um, next up, let's see. We'll be speaking about the preview and the press conference, and then we'll be doing a live watch along for the Cayman Islands and also for also for um, Dominican Republic. Let's go back and look at that Dominican Republic. I just uh, let's see. So when's their game again? Their game they're playing on. Friday for you guys. 12 a.m. on Saturday. All right. Let's 
Sunday 1 a.m. today playing before Jamaica. Okay. Royal champions, you know who we are. There's a lot of gloating in the comment section. I don't understand these world champions conversation. I don't know who you guys are referring to. Um, who is the world champions? Uh, I don't know who you're referring to, Mr. Mills. Um, now, if you're talking about being invincible, then maybe I can read that type of comment on screen. But And even with this comment, all I can see really and truly on my screen is a hashtag followed by some letters but i don't know what the letters say so if you can find a way to communicate it to me i would greatly appreciate it eagles 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 what, what's that all about is that the nigerian super eagles i don't know which other eagles you're referring to there mr harris um so guys tonight lovely bit of news there for you guys who are wondering what tonight the bulk of tonight's conversation centered around the return of uh marlo, marlo, marlo sweatman and Paige bailey girl back in the squad so that's music to the ears of many of the reggae girl supporters i know a lot of you have been asking where is marlo sweatman and Paige bailey girl well news for you they are back in the team as for drew spence i did probe a question on uh regarding drew spence and i was told that there is no update there where her documentation is concerned i will also be looking to seeking to find an answer where jade bailey is concerned congratulations once more to jade bailey and liverpool um i actually wrote i actually wrote a um article on that if you can go over to the newspaper that i write for and you can go ahead and see this one let's go ahead and see as you can see there um Reggae girl Jade Bailey helps Liverpool to the promised land. Jamaican international Jade Bailey's Liverpool, Liverpool's women secured promotion to the FA Women's Super League after winning the championship. And there you go. You can see it there. Um, their newfound status came after an entertaining 4-2 victory over second place Bristol City in front of a division record attendance of 5,752 at Ashton Gate on sunday so i want to try and see if i can stick this article in the comment section you guys can go ahead and give it a read if you must but that is the paper that i write for on the black british newspaper that being the voice the voice newspaper over here in the uk what is this what 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 is this something arsenal can't i don't understand what what happened to arsenal mr harris i don't you guys are speaking some weird language tonight i don't understand what's going on i, I don't get it lions world champion are you saying that the three lions will be world champion I don't understand what are you saying mr mills i, I don't understand Don't understand what you guys are playing at in the comment section. I'm 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 confused. You're talking about Arsenal, but I don't know what it is about Arsenal. I don't did they play? Did they play tonight? I don't I don't know. Um I don't know, maybe they played. I, I don't know. I don't really don't watch club football, so you're you're speaking to the wrong person there, guys, in the in the comment section. Don't have a clue what goes on like, with club football, so speaking to the wrong person, sorry um so uh that's how things are shaping up that's how things shaping up where the rigor girls is concerned like i said i will be back this week with a preview a press conference and also a live watch along as well okay now it makes sense in okay Hot chili, big up yourself because I was confused. I saw three lions and world champion, and I didn't really understand. You see, teamwork make the dream work. No, I get it because I don't know Mills and Harris. Those two young gents, they're confusing the life out of me. I don't know. Maybe 
age and experiences allowing them to run rings around me. So I'm glad that I've got somebody in my corner. Don't understand. I don't, I, I still don't get it. Somebody lose tonight? I don't know if someone lost tonight. Maybe somebody lost tonight, but I don't know which team it is. There's so many teams out there in the world. Don't understand. Somebody lost tonight, it seems. What happened to the mid? See, these are these are comments that I can read with ease. What happened to the midfield general from Chelsea? She was the yes, Mr. Lynch. I did ask about uh, uh, you talking about Drew Spence. I did ask about Drew Spence, and I was told that there is no changes there where her documentation is concerned. <laughs> Mr. J. Ross, how are you, sir? How are you doing? gone past 3 30 here in the uk i can't sleep i'm not gonna lie to you i haven't been i haven't done a live stream with you guys for a couple of days um simply because i haven't been feeling well but um feeling better much better um I don't know what what's I don't know what's going on in the comment section tonight, you know. But you guys are speaking in a different different language. What is this? WWE Undertaker, rest in peace. That's a good shout because he was inducted in the Hall of Fame over the weekend, wasn't he? The dead man himself is finally resting in peace. So it's nice to know that you guys watch WWE. So you guys are playing some homage there to the Undertaker. Another one, rest in peace to Undertaker. Never knew you guys was um, a follower of WWE. It's nice to see that we have something else in common. Leave some for me as well, because I tell you what, Undertaker is one of my favorite wrestlers. So please, please leave some flowers for me as well. Um, please go ahead and do that for me. I don't know why what what are you guys referring to no top four for you um what does that mean what does that mean I, I don't know what that means I mean um I don't know I, I don't watch club football so you guys have to keep me in the loop you know <laughs> you guys have to keep me in the loop because I don't have a clue what's going on I can read comments like these with ease Lauren James from Chelsea. No update on Lauren James from Chelsea. She was our best player on the... Lauren James? Lauren James? You sure you're not talking about Drew Spence? I think you might be talking about Drew Spence. No, but th what this tells me, Teja, what this tells me is that I need to go and upskill myself where a language is concerned. Because you know what it is. I'm 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 proud of them. I'm proud of Mills, the rest of the guys, Harris in the in the um comment section because they speak more than one language. Not only do they speak more than one language, they can write in more than one language. And I like that. So what that tells me is I need to go and upskill myself. I'm gonna pick another language. Let me know in the comment section what language you guys think. I should go and study because I feel ashamed that there is people here that's speaking another language and I can't even read it on my own live stream. Shameful stuff. Lynch knows nothing we don't know. I'm good, better than, what is this? I'm good, better than, and Chelsea at least. Hmm. Hmm, all J Ross, everybody bilingual, that's nice. <laughs> you lot, you lot are shameless. You lot have no shame whatsoever. I like it. I like it. I definitely like it. You guys have no shame. Football banter. You yeah, guys have no shame with your teams. Um, but yeah, guys, let me know in the comment section what language should I go and study?
before I sign up, and I'm being serious, actually, all banter aside, let me know what language I should actually study. That's a, that's a serious um, question for you guys, all banter aside. Don't ever feel like you can't come here and banter Arsenal. You can. I have no problems with that. You know what? If I never knew better, I would have said that you're, you support Manchester United. But Manchester United fans know better right now than to give any trouble. They know better than to give any trouble. They have to keep themselves quiet. So, um, so yeah, you guys don't ever feel like you can't come over here. You're doing it already anyways if you're Arsenal banter. Talk about cannon now, fire and them something there. Um, I have no problems with you guys bantering my team. I can tell that you're feeling really blue. All of a sudden, as soon as you come over here, so the place get cold. I have a feeling that you are Mr. Chelsea without you even telling me. <laughs> oh god there we go again i ask you guys for one simple thing let me know what language you guys think i should go and study um and you guys revert back to speaking in a language that i can't follow so i don't know always had you guys that down as a decent bunch of supporters but looked like i was wrong um okay and i also gave some um touched on lvg there bit of an unfortunate news where lvg is concerned i'll bring that one up for you guys again before i go um so that we can all keep him in our prayers um let's bring up lgv some information there on lgv if i cross over to twitter and click on barcelona's page you can read this one if not i will gladly read it for you our thoughts and prayers go out to former Barca manager louis van gal who has been diagnosed with prostate cancer stay strong louis and get well soon um so speedy recovery to lvg and we're all hoping and praying that he can fight off this disease and hopefully by the grace of God, he will have the last laugh. Let's see if you guys are still speaking in foreign language. <laughs> you guys are something else though. Okay, thank you, Mr. J. Ross. Thank you. I'm glad we have somebody serious on my side. German. German, yes. Yes, I'm with you on German. German is quite similar to English, isn't it? I've taken a look at German, actually, and it did see, I did see, I did see um, similarities between English and German. So that's a good shout. French, Spanish, Dutch, Chinese, and Indian. I don't think I can master Chinese and Indian, Mr. Mills. I think the only one right now that makes sense is the German. I can't master no Chinese and no Indian. I think, um, like J. Ross said, you know, the most invaluable languages to learn right now, Mandarin, German, or Spanish, those are some inval invaluable language. Similar to, um, you can add French to that as well. Invaluable language languages there to, to study. Creole Haitian, really? Well, and since when J. Ross supports Chelsea? J. Ross, tell me, is that true? Do you really support Chelsea? I had you down as Manchester United. Serious question, is that who you support? 
honest to God, I had you down as a Manchester United, or maybe it's um I thought that you that you um fresh and Minzes, I thought you all support Manchester United. I never knew that you um who oh, my name is Hot Chili. I'm from Jamaica. So um I see okay Hot Chili, I see your um you're, you're stunting on the rest of us. Don't worry yourself. I'm gonna go and learn another language so don't you worry yourself greetings from panama big up panama for the guys out there in panama big up yourself um what time is it over there in panama and thank you for tuning in andres moses did i pronounce your name right i hope i pronounced your name right Jay Ross, I really had you down as a Manchester United supporter. I had no idea, no clue that you um support. You have a bit of a Manchester United vibes about you, Jay Ross. I'm not going to lie. I honest to God thought that you support Manchester United. Never had you down in a million years as a, um, what do you want to call it? As a um, Chelsea supporter. You're most welcome. Come over to the dark side if you ever watch Star Wars, the dark side one in the first two movies. Well, men are like Star Wars, so if so be the case, I won't be moving. Um, I, I played around with a few languages. Um. But I think German is the most, I think German feels, I mean, if I compare it to German, Spanish, and French, German sounds easier to learn. Because like I said, if you've looked at German, um, if you look at the German language, it's quite similar to the English in terms of the words and the way they're spelled. Um, so, um, yeah. So I'm going to be looking at, I'm going to be looking at the um few of the languages that you have suggested. Star Wars. Are you gonna try and persuade somebody with Star Wars? No, you couldn't pay me for watch Star Wars. I really don't make it public all the time. I'm a regular boy. <laughs> mm. Chelsea. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, when I do games, uh, it's been a while since I've done um, a game at Stamford Bridge. Stamford Bridge is a good place to cover matches. Dutch. Dutch never came to mind. This is a good shout. I never thought of studying Dutch. But, yeah, this 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 is interesting. I'll add that to my list. I can add um, Dutch to my list. Okay, interesting. Yeah, Jay Russ, we, we need to have another conversation um, about your team. Next time you come on here, we definitely need to have another chat about your team. Nothing to do with banter. Uh, be interesting to know how you became a Chelsea supporter. I think they are beatable. I think they are beatable. And yeah, we've gone through the Dominican Republic, most certainly a beatable team. But games are won on match days, aren't they? Yes, they are sitting at the top of the table and they have a sketch you can call it somewhat, say it loosely, superior goal difference there in comparisons to the rest of the um, teams in the table, Jamaica being the closest to them. So they're, they're looking good. They're looking good at the top 
all the things that separate Jamaica and the Dominican Republic, the Dominican Republic is the obvious goal difference. Where are you based? Where are you based? Are you based in um, Jamaica or are you based somewhere else? If nowadays, if I hear people say in their mid 20s or oh, Washington, okay, interesting. Nowadays, if I hear people in their mid 20s say that they support Chelsea, I can only assume that it's down to the likes of Drogba, um, you know, um, those black modern players on their rosters, couple. They call it maybe 15 seasons ago. Maluda, all those black players that they had once upon a time. The JFF can get their, can't get their act together on passports and documents. The reggae girls team that played Costa Rica in those practice, ma practice mas matches last year is best assembled. assembled. Players still missing, players still missing, but we can't exactly, can't complain about that at this point, Mr. Lynch. All we can do is support the players that are part of the squad announcement. I'm glad that I was clear, definitely glad that I was clear. And thank you again for tuning in. Um, big up Panama. That is where you said you was from, if I'm not mistaken. Apologies if I got that wrong. Um, but yeah, big ups to you and Panama. And I'm glad I was able to communicate a clear response there so that you can understand. See what you guys are saying. Guys, I'm going to give you two more minutes and then I'm logging off. Um, so what kind of movies since you're trashing Star Wars? I, once upon a time, I used to like horror, but there hasn't been a good horror movie in some time. So that was like one of my favorite genres, horror. Action. Action is one of my favorite genres as well. Depending on my mood, I might want some comedy or romance, but I, I like horror and I like um, action. You're not, you couldn't pay me to watch Star Wars then. No. Mm -mm -mm -mm. definitely not sitting and watching star wars that's the one of the people with the pointy ears right or is that what's the ones with the people them with the pointy ears there's two movies that's like that star wars and not star trek so are they by the same people as in production company i don't like movies like that um definitely don't like movies like that pointy ears people <laughs> oh star wars oh star wars is by disney <laughs> oh thank you i'm just speaking of wwe i'm just getting in the spirit of wwe i watched um bianca belair right and sasha banks oh my god and i actually caught a glimpse of them last year I would believe that that was the first time in history that we've had two black women headline the main event at WrestleMania. And then I watched them, I watched um, Bianca Belair on, must have been Saturday night. I watched it, tried to watch WrestleMania day two last night and the stream just cut out. So I just gave up. Um, but oh my God, it's great to see black women in WWE. That's inspirational. Um, I, I understand it vaguely, vaguely. I'm not going to big myself up and say I understand it fluently or I can speak it fluently. I can't, so don't put me to the test. I'm going to fail. Star Wars. Oh, my God. You guys are talking as if I need to go and watch Star Wars now. Yes, Becky Lynch. What a fight that was. She was irritating me, Becky. She called herself Big Time Becky or something like that. She was stressing me out. I was like, go down, woman.
Okay, okay, okay. Um, I'm going to add, I stopped watching horrors maybe like a few years ago, J. Ross, because it just got to a point where horrors just seemed like comedy. Like I'll be sat there and thinking, what is this? It's not even funny. One of my favorite horrors of all time is Houses of Wax. I love Houses of Wax. That is one of my favorite movies of all time. You can just take me back on Wrong Turn. The, the like one of the first ever wrong turns i think the new versions of wrong turn is just it's a joke really but wrong turn when it first came out in like the early millennium back then crazy love wrong turn and i love houses of wax yes stone cold steve austin oh my when you hear the psh, oh god yeah what made me tear up was listening to Undertaker. Oh my God, he's like he's one of my favorite favorite wrestlers of all time, and watching him receive his Hall of Fame obviously absolutely deserves it. It just brought it brought a tear to my eye to think that like, this is the guy that we all grew up watching, and it's just sad that he's now he's like he's looking old and Stone Cold Steve Austin. All those guys are like looking old. Um, Oh man, Shawn Michaels, even Rey Mysterio. I wanted Rey Mysterio and Dominic to win their match, and they didn't. I was I, I was in favor of the fairy tale story. They didn't win their match. Um, oh, I was actually going to live stream that. If I knew that you guys were into WWE, I would have live streamed it. Maybe next year, God spare our life. Maybe next year, I will live stream um, WrestleMania if I can get a link. That is, J Ross please check out house of wax yes that's how you spell it house of wax um classic wrong turn you should watch wrong turn but when i say wrong turn let's see if i can give this four more minutes with you guys let me see if i can find the right wrong turn for you 2003 let me show you let me show you a before i go let me show you the wrong turn that i'm referring to because there's so many wrong turns and they're rubbish. This is the wrong turn that I'm referring to. Um, let's see. Let's see the cost for this one. Yeah, it's this one. This is the wrong turn. So you're going to be looking for 2003. House of Wax, look for the 2003. Remember, wrong turn, 2003. Can I get up that um, poster? Yes, this is the wrong turn. Oh my, classic. That's the wrong turn. You're going to be looking at stuff like this, so. <laughs> Love wrong turn. House of Wax. Let me show you House of Wax. Mm -mm -mm. House of Wax. This is the main cast for House of Wax. Let's see if I can actually do a better job at this because that's quite whack what I'm doing to you guys. Let's go back with House of Wax. Um, so this is the main cast. Look for Chad Michael Murray, right? House and Paris Hilton, Robert Richard as well. Um, so I think it's probably the one that came in 2005. Let's see. Chad Michael Murray. So yeah, look for House of Wax 2005. Chad Michael Murray, and also Wrong Turn. Yeah, I love them. All right, guys, I'm about to log off now. Shamar, don't make me sad because my stream closed off. I didn't get to watch this. The, the, the main event. Ridiculous. I liked it. Just, yeah, remember when the guy was under the cellar I don't want to ruin it for Jay Ross, but the guy was under the cellar, Travis, and then someone came along when he put his finger up through the cellar. Uh, oh, God, I don't want to. Yeah, it is, it is gruesome, more gruesome than scary. House of Fat, House of Wax. That's my wife's favorite about my ears. Says about my ears. <laughs> oh, God. Really? What did they do? Really? What did they do? Did they not allow you to talk about? I mean, it is screen um screen share, so 
we'll see what happens with that. I'm not broken no violation with them, but thank you for giving me the heads up. I think that is it, guys. Let me stop my shared screen. I'm not going to be needing this until um, next time. Thank you for giving me that heads up there. Travis, I need to have a moment with you, sir. If you are free this week, let me know. Drop me a DM if you are free this week um, so that we can talk about the women's team. And also, Jay Russ and you guys, if you guys want to talk about the women's team, all you have to do is just click on the link when I drop it in the comments section. If I don't drop it, then don't be afraid to ask. The US women's team is on the decline. Reggae girls have the quality. However, Vin Blaine is not the coach to push in the conversation in CONCACAF. We need Mr. Lynch, I'm going to have to politely decline, um, not decline, disagree with you there where um, Busby is concerned until all matters is resolved and there is transparency on the table. Crystal, you should come back on later today. You guys want me to come back later on today? I'm going to have to think of a new um, talking topic though. I'll think of something. I'll try and think of something and come back on later on today for you guys. Say round about the same time. Could come back round about the same time. If I see any breaking news, I will jump on and do a live stream. But if not, I'll probably come back on around, say, 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. UK. And that should be 4 p.m. if you're based in Jamaica. So I could come back on tomorrow. <laughs> Where's my bears? I need my bears. Um, so yeah, I could come back later on um, and talk some more with you guys. But um, since it is four in the morning <laughs> and a stunner, would love to do a stunner on someone. Um, since it is four in the morning, four past four in the morning, I think we've spoken enough We've, we've covered a couple of grounds here, guys. The big story from the uh, player announcement, the squad announcement there is the return of Marlo Sweatman and Paige Bailey Gale. Both of those players have returned to the squad. Good evening, Loud Music. You have come towards the end there. Um, I'm about to close off. Mr. Mills said to come back tomorrow. Um, so since I am here to cater to you guys, I guess I could come back. Um, I'll have to find a topic to discuss. Um, I'll try and think of something and see if I can come back tomorrow with a fresh new topic. I do hope that you guys, it's not a pushover there, quick athletic, absolutely, absolutely not a pushover. Blessings to yourself. Blessings to yourself. Just had a Manchester United fan send me a WhatsApp. Um, funny how he has... All the talk in the world now, but when Man United lose, he's quiet like a church mouse. I'm not going to let him draw me out. I know what this conversation is all about. Definitely not let him draw me out. Might call him tomorrow. Ask him why is he disturbing me at four in the morning um, about Arsenal. Or I might just save it until Man United lose because they're bound to lose again at some point. If not in this season, then next. Guys, thank you so much, each and every one of you in the comments section. Thank you so much for blessing me with a moment of your time. We have been live streaming for the best part of, call it four hours and 10 minutes. And I have enjoyed each and every moment, every minute that has gone by. I will be coming back during the week. We will be talking about the preview preview for the game against Cayman Islands and also the press conference also be doing a live watch along as well a few of you in the comment section have said to come back tomorrow so I'll have to go and get my thinking books my thinking cap on think of something um new to discuss so um, good night to yourselves it is pretty much pretty late where you guys are early morning for me over here in the UK six past four in the morning I will be back 
gonna have to go and get some rest and think of a new talking topic i hope you guys have enjoyed my <laughs> conversation with you guys i trust that you have because you've stayed for so long uh, mr chili take care of yourself sir Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure to each and every one of you in the comment section who have kept been engaged with the conversation. Big up to yourself and to those of you who are silently watching. Don't be shy next time. Drop a comment in the comment section. Before you leave, please do go ahead and hit the like button. Big ups to yourself. Take care to yourself. Travis, please remember to send me a um, DM as well. I just want to know your availability so that we can talk about the regular girls. Um, depending, all depend on when you're available. Let's talk about the coach when you come back. You want to talk about the coach? Okay. All right. I hope you're here tomorrow night, Mr. Mills. Um, let's say maybe let's go for I think let's go for eleven o'clock tomorrow. Let's try eleven o'clock because that seems to be the time where most of you are at home. Most of you in the States, Canada, and Jamaica as well. So let's go for eleven PM. Eleven PM UK guys. So I'm six hours ahead of you in the in Jamaica. Um Good night to the rest of you. If I don't see you tomorrow, I do hope that you have a lovely week and also a fantastic weekend when it comes. Um, before you go, please do go ahead and hit that like button. If you are new to the channel, do go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Until next time. I'm John Barnes and you're watching Talawa TV with Crystal Davis.